Future belongs to the nerds. Revolve alive. What you say? Revolve alive. Every Sunday at six, bringing that gaming magic to your life. Doing it live on Twitch to show that you don't wanna miss. Be sure to subscribe. Crack yourself a brew. If it work, are you who? Now you can join the crew for the ride. Xbox, mobile, and hot topics around the nation. To gaming rigs, headsets, hardware, and PlayStation. Shout out to Joe. Can't you see him glow? Token brother brought the flow. Now it's time for the show. Let's go. go. What's going on? What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer. Today, I'm joined by my awesome Revolver co-host. Today, joined by the king of all things destiny, Briar Rabbit. Welcome, sir. How you doing this week? I'm doing awesome, man. I'm doing CrossFit. I'm doing uh, weightlifting. I'm doing lots of Twinkies. Like, everything's going great over here. No DDR? Mm, No, no DDR. I left that to you. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's a lot of fun man i'm really happy to see you what's going on wilson how you feeling this week my friend doing good man doing good been playing uh trials on pc all weekend loving it having a great time yeah I'm, so I'm, good i'm really anxious to hear about it guys i know i'm kind of late to that party i'm coming i've just been so busy and i want a pc that's going to do the game justice i promise you i'm coming wilson i also got to say you're fresh as hell man i mean every week you make me feel older and older even though we're kind of close in age shit how do you keep up with the trend so well man um my it's clean brother as you guys know my girlfriend sam uh she lays out my clothes for me each morning make sure that they match <laughs> Sam is I, very fashionable. <laughs> I'm getting sick of this shit. Here, you can hear in the living room going, that is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and last but certainly not least, what's going on, Gary Diaz? How you feeling this week, my friend? Feeling fine. Feeling very good. It's been a, a great week for gaming and a, I think a great week for the crew. We've all had uh, a fantastic time from chats that we've had. Yeah, it's uh, looking forward to the show. Yeah, man, it's going to be a great show. And for people who don't know, Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. You can become a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. And if you're unable to see the live feed that's today or the video format, you can now check us out in podcast form on your favorite podcast service provider, Podbean, iTunes, or wherever you do your podcasting. And with that, welcome to Revolver Live, episode 16. What's going on, fellas? Dude, I am Ooh. hyped. I am hyped. Where do you guys do your podcasting? Uh, I usually do mine at Pod Addict. Believe Pod me. Addict? Is that an app? Yes. Yeah? I use uh, Downcast and Overcast. I actually have two podcast apps because I fall asleep listening to podcasts a lot. And it'll just kind of play, so I need a backup list of podcasts because they delete <laughs> after you play through. So I have every podcast downloaded twice on my phone. Oh wow! Nice. <laughs> I just use the uh, the basic whatever comes with your phone. I do the, the same thing a lot. Podcast app. podcast, the little basic, BB, bitch, basic bitch one. I'll fall asleep listening to podcasts too, but I listen to like some really fucking out there podcasts sometimes. Yeah, so give you nightmares. Yeah. It can can influence my dreams and shit i'm dreaming about aliens and fucking sasquatch and Let me just nasa and all that have you ever stuff. listened to like um anything ghosts or the paracast i'm sure you listen to the paracast no i used to listen to a lot of coast to coast back in the day okay, but that George was back Murray. when uh, oh my god that guy's insane art bell art bell was amazing dude he'd he call in like someone would call him and he'd be like i'm a werewolf and he'd go oh my <laughs> You would never judge anyone. You know what I mean? Just That's go, how you oh got to be. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Coast, Coast on was it, awesome. Nah, I totally it see you, you judge somebody who calls in and says, I'm a werewolf. <laughs> I think that's man, A-OK. I want to hear their story. If they were, would you, wouldn't you want to hear their story? Fuck yeah. 
And all right. And that's what Art Bell. But I would be muting you, the man. microphone and laughing my ass off the whole time. <laughs> and they'd, they'd, they'd be saying, you know, that Briar Rabbit's such a great listener. He doesn't say anything. He lets the crazy people talk. Off. He's muted and laughing his ass off the whole fucking show. Look, you can't be the boy who cried wolf. Do you want to be the guy who calls out the guy who says he's a werewolf and then he goes and savages the town, rips kids' heads off, man? You've got to listen to these people. This could be a real threat you're averting. He's telling the yeah, truth. You can't no, I think I'm good. I'm just going to laugh my ass off at him. <laughs> Have you not seen the movie Silver Bullet? Remember yeah, that movie man. from the 80s? Yeah, that shit was uh, fucked up. Dude. I saw American Silver Werewolf Bullet. in London. I know that Gary should be scared, but I'm safe. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I saw, uh, I think, a documentary by Michael Jackson. It was called Thriller. Um, mm -hmm. Trust me, that was very informative. Yeah. Very informative. Se 17 minute documentary. There was some yeah. dancing in it. I think it was expressive. <laughs> Yeah. It's really informative, to be honest. If you're really looking to get into like cryptozoology with like werewolves, it's a good place to start. Yeah, it definitely. That's where I, definitely. That's where I base my things. Talking podcasts as well, guys. The viewers have stepped up to the mark this week. We begged and they delivered. They took pity on us. It was fantastic. We are. Mm. We enjoy your pity. From... Thank you for your pity. We do. I, 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 I wallow in pity, <laughs> self pity as much as viewer pity. Um, and. Podbean and iTunes have been going from strength to strength. You guys have blown us away with the support. So if you're watching us on YouTube, um, please consider heading over there. We do a lot of work to make sure the audio is of the best possible quality. And it will also save your data charges when you're out and about because you can just download the podcast when you're at home. So win-win. Um, we're over 120 followers now on Podbean, um, and we're averaging significantly larger viewerships week on week on iTunes. So if we could bump that followers up to 200, I think that, I don't know, I, don't, I can't speak for the rest of my guests, but I'm personally willing to take quite tasteful photography um, <laughs> of my anus. Um, you know, we, we, Dick Pics was old. You know, Dick Pics yeah, is ancient. Yeah, that's so last year. We're moving yeah. on to the uh, seen the, a million the, times. The, the chocolate starfish is the the next trend. <laughs> so the oh, new yeah, front, the final nice. frontier. <laughs> if anyone wants some some tasteful anus photography, um, please consider following us and leaving reviews on the iTunes or the um, the Podbean. You can just type Revolver Live into both of them and find us there. Uh, we'd massively appreciate that. Yeah. Can I, uh, can I segue into something real quick here? Speaking of uh, reviews, leaving us a review on iTunes, uh, we had said that. Um, if we found some funny ones that we were going to read some and yes. I found a couple funny ones. So, I want to hear some um, funny reviews. Chad B says hashtag fucked like big bird. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Don King 44. Love the podcast. Only four stars. Cause Gary is slow uploading them and I have to watch them on YouTube and kill my battery. Hashtag God, Gary, what like the fuck's the hold up, man? You fucking up our score, Gary. <laughs> this week it took your wife kicking me up the ass for me to put it on there. That was how bad it got. <laughs> I forgot about that, dude. She called you out. Yeah, man. She's uh, like, Friday, motherfucker. What day did you call this? I was like, oh. damn. We got we got another one from Captain Mo. It says, I uh, listen to the podcast mostly for the segments on porn. However, these guys know absolutely nothing about VR porn. Very disappointing. The parts where they talk about video games are okay, I guess. Five stars, though. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think I we think we're going step to have up to our, our game on VR porn, guys. I we think that's right, that. Beastly. I, I think, think if we can't expert, let who was that who left that comment there? That was uh, Captain Mo. Captain Mo. We cannot let Captain Mo down. We need to oh. we need to become the authorities on VR porn in the podcasting world. I think it sounds like we've got an authority. Is there any chance we could get a dial-in expert there from Captain Mo to come in as a consultant? <laughs> yeah. fifth, we can fifth guest. We can bring him on, you know, dial him up and say, Captain Mo, what's your view on this? And he can go into in depth on the uh, the um for how many splats out of ten he gives it. But yeah, calling oh, Captain a Mo. Great way to rate it. You know, I I, I want to try it, but I only have one VR headset, so I'm going to be hanging out with my wife. Who knows whether or not, you know, I'll end up getting divorced. I don't know how no, this, this is work. full immersion, right? She can watch the TV and see what's happening on the TV and reenact it for you. Double I think dipping. I, she probably slipped my throat. Next level. That's like, that's like the minority <laughs> yeah. report. It does sound of... risky to me too, Beastly. It is, man. <laughs> you got to wear a Kevlar in a situation with some women. She's like, are you looking at her titties or mine? Uh... You, you don't know what to say. <laughs> Both. Smile <laughs> and nod. That's a great. That's the best answer, Wilson. Smile and nod. That's what my dad told me. Good man. Yeah. Great teacher. It was totally related to VR porn too. It was like, <laughs> like son, sure one day he was an innovator. Day, <laughs> yeah, that was a fucking he was that man ahead of his time. He, he was a precog. He could see it coming. 
<laughs> so, I know you guys have been uh, hanging out this week and, and, and playing some uh, trials on, on the PC, and I'm excited to hear it, but I want to let you guys know what I've been doing this week. I've turned over a whole new, kind of a whole new leaf, and I went back, back in time, and I've been playing PlayStation 2. I, I tweeted it out to you guys. Colin Moriarty's mom even commented on what I've been doing. I've been playing Dance Dance Revolution, DDR2 Max. I went and bought uh, two new mats because my old mats are like 8, 9, 10, 15 years old. So I bought new ones uh, and, and I just refurbished everything and made it all new again. And me and my wife have been in the living room stomping like people possessed. At some point, I think I'm going to go through my hardwood floors and end up in the crawl space. We've, we've been having a ton of fun playing it, though. And it's been so many years. It's good to know that I still got the rhythm. So I, I took it a step further after playing DDR2. I've been playing it every day for like the last four days. And my, my feet are actually hurting very, very bad right now, believe it or not. I, I went today and I played an old PS2 game called uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica. And I just wanted to show, you know, my kids what it looked like. And I ended up getting sucked into that experience and I played was, it all the way up. That came out for the Dreamcast originally, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it came out on Dreamcast, Ooh. but it later came out on PS2. And PlayStation 4 recently had a sale. And I think I only spent 3 or $4 for the game. I have it on PS2 over here somewhere, but of course the PS4 version is a better, superior version by the way it looks. But I start playing it, and my kids are watching it, and I got pulled into it, and I felt like I went back to the times where this game actually was out. And the story and the characters and all that stuff kind of pulled me in, and I've been stuck playing that, so I figure, I figure I'm going to end up beating that game, which is nothing compared to what you guys have been doing. But I wanted to put it out there, and I wanted to ask you guys your thoughts on my DDR2 performance. Well... I'll be honest with you. Uh, I enjoyed what I saw, but I felt that I wanted more. I did not get my fill of Beastly on the DDR mats. I feel like that is a joy that needs to be shared with the world um, in a much longer format. I could see a documentary series, uh, Ken Burns style, maybe 18, <laughs> 19 hours uh, of Beastly does DDR. <laughs> this needs to yeah. be streamed, Beastly. You have got to stream this, man. This would be Boom. amazing. <laughs> I agree. You know and, like, to piggyback what Briar said, like, I was, like, no joke. Like, I felt like I went to a fancy restaurant and had very small portions of a delicious meal. <laughs> I was only seeing the lower half. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more upper half with my yeah. three-course meal. You know what I mean? A little... Okay. You know, maybe some of the shoulders. I know yeah. you're... I want to see the shimmy. That's exactly what I do, Wilson. Oh, man, you know it. I know. You feel me, man. You feel me. As a That's man right. with a significant foot fetish, I can review it by saying I came. So, there you go. <laughs> Positive. <laughs> we got to admire the honesty of Gary Diaz. You know what, Gary? I have a foot fetish, too, and I feel you. It was like masturbation watching my, my feet dance on that screen. I loved it. It was amazing. <laughs> And, and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I agree with Briar, though. It either needs to be worked into some sort of YouTube series or something that you stream. And also, look like the rest of the family was having fun too. I saw, uh, I saw one of the kids Nina. dancing off. Nina dancing off to the right, and she didn't even have a match. She was having. Hi, a Nina. She's watching us right now. Hi, honey. Jesus hey, Christ! Nina. Why'd you put that hate on us? <laughs> I don't know that I'm corrupting this someone's is, youth. This is not safe for She's only four, Beasley. Gary. She's only four. Does that make it better? No. Actually, it might. <laughs> Go ahead, I, Gary. I, I turned out kick ass. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking Yo, about. We played Trials of Osiris on the PC. I got to say, uh, it was me, Gary, Wilson, and who was our fourth? Lightbreaker. Was Lightbreaker. Lightbreaker. Mm, and I gotta say, I think it's the most fun I've had playing Trials of Osi or Trials of the Nine, period. But probably the Trials game mode in, I'll bet two years. Like it was wow. incredibly fun, man. I had a blast with it. We we did two full trial cards. Uh, we had a mix of people playing on keyboard and mouse and people playing on on um, controller on controllers. I believe it was a keyboard and mouse sandwich because Gary was at the top of the leaderboard with a keyboard and mouse. I was at the bottom of the leaderboard with a keyboard and mouse. And we had the the tasty meat and cheese in the middle. 
with Wilson and uh, and Light. I don't know. Light was Light working keyboard and mouse, or was he working? He was. He was doing keyboard and mouse. Yeah, oh, he's so really it was good like too. A, it was it was like a club so, sandwich then with the so, three pieces yeah. of bread. But before you get get into the meat and potatoes of this experience, Wilson did better than you with a controller. So it is possible to play on PC with a controller. And yeah, we said that all along, man. The game is very playable with a controller. Yeah, Gary might I, Gary might yes. talk shit about you the whole time. But it's very playable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just for the people who don't follow us on Twitter, which you need to, yes. Gary posted a picture of himself playing um, Crucible a few days ago. 27 and 0. He had a 27 uh, point KD, man. He was pulling that, guy, that down all day on Friday. Yeah, it was he, pretty, he did it like three was. or four times, if not three, more. He ran out of. Three re ran out of tissues medals for, <laughs> against the other team. They he was destroying people. It was disgusting. I got one my first game, and I was like, "Oh, this is on." I was like, "I'm come at me, Gary. I'm ready. To, <laughs> my dick is out. I'm ready for this pissing contest. Let's go." It was a good pissing contest. No, it's, and, just, uh, yeah, yeah. It felt right. That's the Gary thing. Won. I've kind of settled into it, and like you say, Bright, it's so much fun. Like the game. I don't know what it is, and we're not gonna go too deep on it now because obviously this isn't a Destiny show, but. There's a, there's a significant difference between console and PC, both in movement. Um, obviously, frame rate's there, but I don't know if it has an impact on speed of movement. It feels like your character is at least 10%, maybe 15% faster across the board. Field of view could be an impact of it. The accuracy of the guns is exceptional. So you enter challenges and engagements that you had no chance of winning on console. Um, there's a lot more verticality in movement as well. So when someone jumps up in the air, you can track them. Same way if you're in the air, you can look down and track onto people. If you look at the way that the PlayStation plays or the Xbox plays, it's very linear. It's very strafing backwards and forwards all on one level in and out of cover and things. This feels like the whole Destiny space fantasy where you're up, up in the air throwing abilities, chucking stuff down, moving, leaping. Did you guys get that? I mean, am I... Am I yeah, kind of channeling I mean, the being able to be accurate with a hand cannon from midair, it changes every engagement. It changes the possibilities completely. Now instead of having to run around a corner, I can you know, I can bounce over a piece of cover and feel pretty confident, assuming that I'm accurate and that my my aim is accurate, that my shots are gonna connect. And that is empowering. That is fun. And they absolutely need to make that happen on the consoles. They need to make guns accurate again on the consoles to make that fun again because i gotta tell you i had i had an absolute blast with you guys on friday Dude, I, was, I was i was looking was, at go ahead, i was BC. looking at gary's tweet and he was talking about using the better devils and how good it felt you know in the crucible and hand cannons on ps4 i shy away from it because i feel like i, I can't hit anything yeah how, how how could they possibly change that for consoles, what is the what is the difference? Can you put the, it into in, words? Yeah, in in Destiny One, uh, in Year Two, they introduced Bloom uh, as a mechanic, specifically on hand cannons, where your aiming reticle may be dead center on somebody's forehead, uh, but depending on the range at which you're trying to shoot him at, the bullet goes straight for a certain distance and then has a cone of accuracy. Um, so that bullet kind of has an RNG system to it as to where it goes. Oh, wow. So you can take you can take twenty shots at this guy standing still, and you're standing still, and you're, you're just pulling the trigger with the with the reticle right on that guy. And who knows how many of those bullets actually connect? Um, on the PC, they've removed that system, or at least it seems like they've removed that system. So now that with a with a hand cannon, you can if you fire it and you're aiming aim is good that bullet's going to connect and it's even fairly accurate if you're jumping up and down in the air and you know moving around it's it's a lot of fun it's a much more dynamic feel than what we were int tr introduced to in destiny 2 on the uh, console and they frankly they need to change the console version to reflect what's going on on the pc because it's way more fun that it really is. Change. Like I, I feel like I'm fighting my weapons a lot more on console and <clears throat> as a controller player on pc I also notice a huge difference bounce because I still play. I've, I've been trying to juggle PC and console like every other day and stuff. I've been kind of bad about it this weekend because I've been doing a lot of trials on PC and it feels really good. Um, I will say like there is, you know, a difference from mouse and keyboard and controller. There is a slight difference. I would say, you know, mouse and keyboard definitely has the advantage if you're comfortable with it and you know what you're doing. 
Um, there seems to be a mouse and keyboard meta and then a controller meta. Um, clear evidence of that is Sunshot. Uh, Sunshot feels fantastic with mouse and keyboard. Um, you don't even have to ADS half the time. I feel like you're at a disadvantage most of the times if you do ADS. Like it just slows down your strafing movement. Um, but you go over to a controller with Sunshot and you're like, oh, okay, it's not as good as, you know, Better Devils in Minuet and um, Annual Skate feel just right on. Just perfect with controller. Really good hand cannons uh, that are fairly easy to obtain. Um, I will say uh, I still really do enjoy the console version as well. I do enjoy the team aspect. Sometimes I like getting out there and and sweating it out, you know what I mean? But you got to... If you're gonna play both, man, this isn't this isn't me trying to crack a joke or be an elitist, but you cannot play PC first and then go to console. You just can't. Like, it does something with your eyes. Like, it takes a minute to get used to. About 20, 30 minutes of it, you get used to it, but it's very disorienting. And half the time, you don't even know what the fuck is going on because you're, you know, the frames they do play a lot with like how it feels different because like you are seeing more things happening than you would in 30 frames, but like. If I start playing on console and haven't played PC, I have no problem. I still enjoy playing it on console. It's still, it's um, it's like experiencing multiple metas within the same game. I've got the console meta, I've got the PC controller meta, and then if I'm really feeling savvy and don't care about sucking, I'll use mouse and keyboard. I mean, this might be controversial, but I, I've been watching a lot of Twitch today, um, and I, I watch a lot of Destiny on Twitch. I'm always hanging out in someone's Twitch chat, and. I'd watched a lot of PC trials players, um, you know, the, the, the big names, etc., who are all playing PC and watching their movement, watching the game. And the game is exciting to watch again. Felt like watching almost like year one Destiny, like the movement, the engagements they were getting in, the speed, the aggression that they had. And we saw that firsthand when we got beaten by a four stack of, of really top tier players, like the speed and the momentum, the aggression. And then I watched, I intentionally wanted to see some PS4 players. So I watched some other big streamers who were doing PS4 again this weekend. The game is not fun to watch on PS4. It, it just isn't. The The way the game plays on the console meta is so stale. It's Uriel's gift. Round a corner, slide, back out. Round a corner, slide, spray. I, I don't know what you can do about it because I feel like... I was watching you play, Wilson. You were not playing like that on the PC with a controller. I don't know right. what it is that's made them so No, you're right. But it, it's, 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 it's aggression. It, like, it promotes aggression. I can't watch content creators. I want to watch... Well, I mean, I can, but it, it's... You know, I'm being pushed away because I'm not finding that the console version is fun to watch. And I don't know how many other people have tried to watch console since um, and have found it fun or not. Maybe it's just me. I, I don't know if me being elitist. I don't think it is because, you know, I wanted to watch the PS4. It's it's definitely a slower paced game on console trials, 100%. Um, and a lot of that has to do with, in my opinion, it's a larger player base of people who, like, I feel like on PC right now, like, this is the first weekend of trials and everyone's, like, trying, still trying new things, like, trying different classes, like, trying these incredible moves to see what their Guardian is capable of. And... I will say that, to, like, and once again, I'm not like talking trash, but I feel like there's more opportunity for the single, the solo player clutch moments on PC. Yeah, I would agree. There's Absolutely. Many moments, and then a lot of that has to do with your ability to move. Um, I've been watching a lot of Crafty. He will slide in and almost do this, like, as he's sliding, he will almost kind of do like a snake motion when he's moving. He's just moving his mouse, sliding around corners. He's sliding around corners and turning his mouse so fast that by the time he turns around, he's still sliding backwards. You know what I mean? Like, wow, it's, seriously? Yeah, it's, it's incredible movement. Like, you can't do that with a controller. You can't. Yeah, I've tried it. Like, I do Blink Warlock. Um, feels fantastic. You can be really aggressive. You can eat grenades, lay down riffs, and cause everybody to stutter their PC game and shit. It's amazing. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard that, by the way. They figured out that's what's causing a lot of the stutters in Crucible is Warlock riffs when you lay them down. But um, I've Fucking been really Warlocks. Enjoying... Fucking yeah. Warlocks. Again. Fucking Warlocks. <laughs> Fucking everything up. And I, apparently Arc Buddies make it worse. But uh, anyway, it... Arc Buddies? <laughs> not Arc Buddies? Yeah. yeah. No, so when I... True. Don't say when that I'm about blinking... my buddy. 
<laughs> when I'm blinking away from an engagement, like if I pull heavy and someone's chasing me, I'll blink, pull out my sniper, and I'll just be pulling a 180 off by the time my feet hit the ground. If you do that on mouse and keyboard, you can blink, turn around, see if there's anyone behind you, turn back around again before your feet even hit the ground. You know what I mean? Like it's it's superior. So like to Gary's question, like I feel like it's more high octane because of the player movement on PC and people are just so set in their ways on console that if more it's people are very well capable of playing like that on console. They just got to play a little bit more aggressive, but like it's harder to pull that shit off with a controller, man. Like when you have to blink out and then count to three Mississippi before your guardian can turn around halfway. Like it's just meant for slower engagements and they don't want to put themselves in that position. Like in my opinion, but it is, it's way more high octane on PC, man. We were playing stupidly aggressive. Like Briar with that play of the game. Like I have that mischievous, just evil laugh that when you're having a lot of fun at somebody else's expense. Yes. Yeah, dude, yeah. he was getting, like, triple downs, running, catching them when they were spawning in for, like, another crispy triple. Like, it was it was so much fun. Snipers mm. feel really good with controller on PC. Oh, my God. It's just a concern that I have, that's all. I mean, it's it's more the fact that the console is the home of Destiny. It will be. It'll always it be the most popular place. It's where everyone is playing. And I just, I feel like it's almost like the inferior representation of the product. Like we're the minority on PC by by a, a you know a country mile, and it feels like why why do we have the best version of the game? Like I feel like the console should be getting the care, yep. love, and attention that it needs because well, that's product. what I hope though, right? Is that yeah. I know that when we talk about the PC version of Destiny, a lot of people go, oh, would they stop talking about this? Would they, you know, I'm so sick of hearing about uh, your unlimited frames and your fucking superior frame rates and. Your, your fucking mouse and keyboard bullshit. Unlimited. I'm telling you, Unlimited when I bring this up, when I talk about this topic, and I bring it up here, and I bring it up on DCP, and I bring it up I bring it up on my Twitch channel, when I talk about it, I very much talk about it with the po- viewpoint that they need to figure out what's right about the sandbox on the PC and import that to the console version to make the console version a better place. Because... What we're talking about is not tied to frame rate. I don't believe it's, it's tied to field of, field, field of view. What we're talking about is the way the fucking weapons handle and what you can do with them in on the PC version. It is a superior sandbox. The shit feels better, not because of field of view, not because of frame rates, because it's just tuned differently. And they need to bring that tuning into the onto the consoles because it's more fun. Yep. I and mean, it's like we're not saying that, that you're that, that, like cuz you could still have fun on console, like that's cool. I still have fun on console. It's very easy for you to pick up those guns and still say, "Well, I'm still having fun." Like that's totally cool. We're not telling you that you're not having fun. Like we I hate to be like, "We know what's best," but like it does feel better. Like when I plug I, my I, controller in, I'm yeah. not fighting my guns. Like they they go where I'm pointing them, and that's how it works. Like I don't care if you're doing triple somersaults through the air if your gun is pointed somewhere and you pull the trigger that's where the bullet goes we have been bitching about bloom for fucking two years like take it out of the game already for fuck's sake it sucks it's a stupid mechanic you should have never put it in there there's already enough rng the reason i think your point's so important briar is is like i was trying to get across there whether you you know want to be pc elitist or not you have to realize that we are not going to sell copies of the game. We're not going to fund development on PC. We're too small a, a, a portion to do it. If Destiny 2 fails on console, Destiny fails full stop. Do you know what I mean? If people aren't having fun on the console version, then there's no Destiny for anyone. So ultimately, we need to, we need to, I guess, um, support the console version. We need to get the console version having as much fun as we are having on the PC because a lot of the complaints that I've heard strip out the end game complaints but the complaints around the game feeling sluggish other things like that i've not heard any of them on pc and no one's not having a good time in destiny 2 pvp and even just doing public events it's just fun to play the game on pc i remember when uh when when you guys had the the opportunity to play the pc version during the beta and um briar and gary you guys came back to the show and you mentioned how different it felt and I remember Briar stating that he thought they were going to make those changes on the console version because that beta was actually first. 
Uh, from the sounds of things, they haven't really changed anything. No, nah, I was wrong about that, Beastly. Do you I... think that? Do you think that they they're actually looking at this? Is it possible that they could actually, you know, remove? They need Bloom to, and... Beastly. I, you're you're right when you said that. Is I I thought that what we were seeing in the PC beta was a reaction a to more how tuned players, version, yeah. yeah, like a reaction to how players received the console version. Players like the console version. They made some adjustments. They had some critical complaints. They, and Bungie made some some adjustments and then came out with the PC version of the beta. And I thought, oh, great. They fixed so many of the things. And then the console version of the actual game came out. I was like, oh, it's just different on PC. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, they absolutely could remove Bloom. Um, here's my thing about, like, the overall sandbox, though. Like, Bungie made the game for console and Vicarious Visions did a lot of the work for PC. Oh, like man. that's a huge pill to swallow, dude. To be like, we now we got to pour it over somebody else's work. Like, and I would totally understand if like that didn't happen. Like they didn't exactly pour it over because like you know we're obviously not going to get the frames, and I don't think a lot of these changes are indicative of frames. That's just a bonus byproduct of the PC goodness that we're experiencing. Um, but. I absolutely think that they could do things like tone back on recoil, uh, tone back, like just make bullets fucking go where your guns pointed, man. Like a lot of shooters do. Nobody in the history of any game has like bloom or any of that bullshit. Like just let let the guns shoot, man, and like let the guns feel even more fun. Like I think they could do that, but like to import, they say, and I want to iterate. I want to get something out there first. Like they say that the sandboxes are the same. I think what a lot of people are misinterpreting that is, is when they say the sandboxes are the same, Uriel's Gift critical shots hit for the exact same numbers on console and PC. The way the what the token system works, the way the ins and outs of the game work are generally the same. But Bloom is not in hand cannons. Even in controllers, it's not, dude, it's almost non-existent. With controllers, like I have no problem using a hand cannon with controller. I want and, to see uh, what that feels like. Yeah, dude, it feels great, man. You point the gun and fucking pull the trigger, and you're seeing damage come up, and yeah. it, it's awesome. It feels good. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of people are misconstruing what sandbox means, and I can tell you right now that the way guns feel is a definitely a different part of the sandbox on PC than it is on console, hands down. Yeah. Hands I think down. we've spoken for about half an hour on um. I guess the. the... That's, on the issues, well, no, I'm just, no we've, our next <laughs> yeah. topic's going to continue, Destiny, but Destiny is more inclusive. Let's look at the positives. So I'm going to paint a picture for you. Oh. We're in we're in trials. We're stomping a team. Mm. Um, we've decided now we're stomping them so hard that we're going to collectively teabag the hell out of the people, you know, call them trash, say they should uninstall the game, that they're terrible players. And you're doing Go this on. live on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> so a typical Monday morning for Gary. Go on. Much. Doing that. Uh, in the Destiny community, I know a lot of viewers there would find that incredibly distasteful, um, would maybe shy away from it. Other content creators would look at you and say that this is completely uncalled for, it's not professional, it's not inclusive. It seems to be that Destiny is the only community that does this. So our topic is, why is the Destiny culture so unique in shooters because in halo you'd have been like calling them all sorts of derogatory um insulting terms you'd have been dropping nuts on them left right and center you'd have been telling them they're trash you know and that was just any game like any match that you played that was happening call of duty exactly the same thing what makes destiny different why do you get shunned if you behave in the same way that you could in any other shooter because adults play destiny a lot of kids play Destiny too, man, and like a lot of them are really cool. Like, and I, I don't mean the word term. I shouldn't say the term kids. I'm sorry, people younger than 18. Young um, adults. Yeah. I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop a few names of people. You know, like uh, King of Pablo, JJ Molina. A lot of those people give me really high hopes for, you know, the future of young gamers. You know, those I guys think I'm conduct. In love. Yeah, those guys conduct themselves in a very, very cool manner. They're they're fun to hang out with, and they, you know, they don't they're not little shitheads like you would think most kids are. But like, there's a, there's a huge age diversity with <laughs> Destiny, man. And there's and like any any um, family culture uh, community, you know, there's 
there's a few bad apples there. But I remember like the Halo days, man, just getting dunked on by like a couple grenades, and some dude comes in and just drops a couple power squats right on your face. <laughs> That's and, attack on tap. Yeah, and, and <laughs> like I don't know if it's because I was younger, but like, dude, that shit didn't even register to me, man. I'm like, yeah, whatever. He's dropping nuts. Now I go into the Crucible, and I'm using say. <clears throat> bad news hand cannon which is bad news and i don't know some bullshit smg that sucks like foggy notion or something like i'm just playing around and some dude you know comes in pure chills me with a nova bomb decides to drop nuts on me i get pissed and i don't know why (laughs) and then i put then i put my my better devils and my uriel's gift on and i go in and and i yeah and then i i high cal him to the face and then i drop my nuts like i never really bag first like but i'm not afraid to uh Wilson is the white knight bagger. Like he will bag for the team. If a bag <laughs> needs happening, Wilson is your man. <laughs> I will step up. If my friend gets bagged, I start seeing red and shit too. I almost take more offense if they bag my friends than me. But because like we were talking about one day, like Briar started bagging some dude, and we're like, oh, we're gonna. He's like, I'm gonna see it on YouTube, Briar. It's gonna be all edited. Briar Rabbit bags first, and all this stuff. And I was like, yo, I'll bag whoever for you from now on, so you don't have to worry about it. But like, You're the fucking man, Wilson. That yeah. is that is, that is the good. That is crazy though, because like in, in Call of Duty, man. I mean, like, dude, I don't know how many times. Like, uh, what what Call of Duty was it where they finally introduced the mute all button in the lobby? Was it like Black Ops? Black Ops Two. Know. Black Ops Two. Black Ops Two. Black, Black Ops Two. Black Ops like, Two. That was the first it was time like they did it. Start and X. I don't know if it was the first, you could, but I know it you could mute was. the whole lobby. You know, and Everybody dude, I have down. heard. I have heard everything in those lobbies, man. <laughs> Just PUBG, man. All. When you're on that airplane, you hear some shit. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, PUBG, yeah, it does kind of bring you back. And I don't know if I had, like... Like I'm, I'm paying more attention now that I'm older. Or if I was just off in La La Land, like growing up, but half that shit just went in one ear and out the other, and you just played the game. And like, I remember people that we'd start talking shit to, and we ended up being friends for like a long time after the game. Like nowadays, yeah. that doesn't, that doesn't happen in Destiny. I'm like, oh, you talk shit. I don't well, want anything to do with you. Let me pull a card from Gary's deck and play devil's advocate here. I. I do fuck with people. You know, it sometimes circumstances call for people to get fucked with. Uh, I don't I don't do it every time in the crucible when somebody gets killed. I rarely do, but if I find myself in a situation where there's two or three people in the room or if I shut down someone super, I'll dance on a hoe. Quick. I'll dance on a bitch. Real Emoting's fast. one thing, if, but do you if, drop Earl Grey tea bags? I yeah. I save that for the last of us, man. You know, that that's the thing for the last Yeah, after ones. he bitch bombs you. <laughs> yeah, I'll bitch bomb you while you crawl around, then I'll teabag the nuts on top of your head as you crawl. Fuck you. You bitch know what it is, you. I think, with uh, Destiny is that so much of the game is focused on cooperative play that you spend so much time banging your head against the wall in raids with your buddies and in nightfalls with your buddies and running around doing you know, patrol missions and with just random fucking people that you start to build up a community with people you don't even really know. You know, like how many times you've been on a raid team with somebody you don't really know, by the end of them, you're cracking jokes with them. You know, you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're ripping them. You, you might spend six hours with this guy that you just met. You just met. Mm-hmm. And those six hours are hard. You know, like you're, you're you got a, a whole, you got a whole realm of emotion happening during a raid, right? Especially when you're struggling. You know, you're elated, you're pissed off, you're tired, you know, you're laughing, you're getting mad at people who aren't necessarily performing, you know, like there's all sorts of shit going on. So then, you know, you got that dynamic and then the leaders of the community, you know, are people who are excelling in that dynamic as well as going out and playing some PvP as well. So there are people in the PvP side of uh, Destiny, like you'll see it in the Twitch directory a lot. That do, you know, they play PvP, that's it. And they, you know, they have fun bagging people and making people feel like shit. But you also see a lot of people who play both sides of it or who excel at the PvE side but do dabble in PvP as well that don't get down with that because they built, you know, they built up these relationships with people and they built, they built channels of the Twitch channels and YouTube channels based on, like, inclusivity and, you know, feeling good. So, of course, they're not going to get down with the bagging. I think that's really the big thing. Yeah, that was kind of one of my questions that I had, um, like a sub question to it was, you know, what makes it this way? Is it the 
community leaders? Is it the silent players? Is it Bungie? Or is it like <clears throat> what I think it's all of the above and it's symbiotic. It's a combination of everyone. You know, the silent player who isn't streaming, isn't content creating, or even just solo queuing, you know what I mean? Like their actions carry weight as well. You know, like the For solo sure. player doesn't want to go up against a fucking team of four and get nuts dropped on them just because they're trying to have a good time. And Eight you guys, nuts. you guys are being pub stomping assholes, which I'm this guilty particular of. Team had nine. It, <laughs> 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 like I, we've been guilty of pub stomping. We've been pub stomped. Like it happens. You know what I mean? But like, it is very unique that in a lot of, cause Gary, I think it was you saying, how is it in Overwatch? What's what's bagging like in Overwatch? Oh, is it man. kind of mixed? Overwatch, you don't get bagged so much in Overwatch. You can bag on some characters. Generally speaking, Overwatch, because you can talk to the opposing team, you can do slash M, and that's match chat, um, or you can do slash T for team chat. So half the time, it's people yelling at their team, either in voice chat or in text chat, saying how much of like a, a shit player they are and how they could <laughs> play that class better than the person who's currently playing it. That happens like continuously but then it'll be people in match chat talking to each other like just yelling all sorts of explosive insults at each other like overwatch has a real real problem with toxicity in the game and that's what kind of i don't know maybe it's because it's a competitive game and destiny is not a competitive game that destiny's become um this sort of i think i don't mean it in a negative way but it's become a real like caring loving you know very sensitive community it's um, an inclusive community. Yeah, and, and right. no other sh- no other shooter has it. And it's just it's very, very unique how it's... I don't think it's like, you know, the, let's take one... You can use his name because he's top of the directory there. Like, um, Gathalian, who is, is like, you know, the daddy of the Destiny community. And they're all often the say himself. He sets the tone for the Destiny community. I don't think it can be solely put on his shoulders for what he's created. But I think a lot of people live by the standards and the um, the... the, the the role model, uh, the, the the role that he he sets for the community, and it's just odd because Twitch is such a minority of the people that play Destiny, but it seems to have infected all of Destiny. Wow. Do you know what I mean? It's it's uh... well, you could set the tone, but it's up to everyone else to follow. And Absolutely. like you know, on Bungie's end, you know they tend to and how do I say this without making it sound kind of shitty? Not really. They kind of reward some of these people that are setting a positive example by, you know, saying, Hey, we got some new stuff coming out. We want you guys to check it out or giving them press release packages for their channels and stuff like that with, with really high resolution photos and cool stuff. Like they don't want to give that to someone who's just being a toxic shithead. You know what I mean? Like who's constantly bashing the game or their teammates, you know what I mean? So like it is everyone, you know, and like a lot of it does fall on the community leaders, but, but at the end of the day, like anyone can set the tone, but it takes everyone else to to follow it's a that team effort to follow. That's and let me quickly segue into something that happened earlier today. You guys mentioned Overwatch um, earlier today. My four year old was sitting over there playing Overwatch. Uh, Kate was next to me playing Mario Odyssey, and I was playing Resident Evil Code Veronica. And Yo, my what's daughter, your four year old's name? Yeah, Hanzo. Hanzo. What's her character? She was playing as May. May. She's May. Yeah, That's cute. Nina, Nina That's was playing as May. Yeah, I don't know about your four year old. She uh, <laughs> stopped playing the game, and she's, you know, it's an online game, and she started talking to her mother, and I turned to look to see what she was doing, and everybody in her party was there attacking her. And I thought that, um, you know, it was the beginning, beginning of the match, but it actually wasn't the beginning of the match. Nina had been sh- inside the starting zone shooting cans with her icicles, Aww. and the whole team was out there losing. And they didn't know it was a little girl who just found joy in shooting icicles so they wanted her to leave and back the hell out so somebody uh-huh. else could play in the lobby <laughs> so i don't I'm care there. if you're four years old or not you're fucking with my elo right now and it's got to stop i told her I said, <laughs> you can't just shoot icicles they need your help and then she proceeded to look at the ground and walk outside and get killed Cute story. that's adorable you should get her playing hanzo it's it's really good it's really good to, yeah Hanzo's it's really me. good He's really, he's really team oriented. He has a lot of utilities. Everyone loves the guy at a party. I mean, damn. Yeah. Hanzo is just shaking his head. You see this BlizzCon BlizzCon announcement. Hanzo, you can now main in Heroes of the Storm. So you can annoy people in two games. Fantastic. (laughs) And Wilson just bought Heroes of the Storm. Look at that. That was quick. (laughs) Actually, it's free, isn't it? Isn't Heroes of the Storm? It is free. You have to buy the Heroes. It's like League of Legends. 
So Hanzo's going to be playable there. I played that game a couple years ago. I liked it quite a bit, actually. One more thing about Overwatch real quick. If I hear one more fucking Genji say I need healing, I swear to God. Swear to God, that is the only character that you hear any games. Of. I need the healing. Like it's just over <laughs> it's and <Genji>. over. <laughs> Can you do the uh, Genji ultimate for me right now? Which one is that? Is that the Yuji UK One? Is that what he says? That the is Yuji the one. Yuji Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Pretty like, awesome. <laughs> Willie, you the man. Oh, they're my favorite. You know, Hanzo. They're brothers. Did you know that Hanzo and Genji? Yeah, yeah. They they're are. in the same room and they're talking. He's all. He tells him he's not the brother that he he once knew. And there's some drama. Hey, drama. It's cool, man. I only want to meet Diva, man. No robot, just diva. All right. It's cute. Yo, we got some huge news to talk about. We don't do a whole lot of news on this channel these days, but good God, did you guys watch the PlayStation conference at Paris Games Week? Yes. It was amazing. Explosion of info. It was. It was insane, right? So I want to kind of go through the list, and I'm going to use an article over on VG247 to kind of, because there are so many games. I just want to go through kind of like, uh, the list to get some reactions as we go here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of name off the games. You guys tell me what you thought, what you got excited about, what you didn't like. Uh, let's and we'll do some like overall impressions at, at the end. How's that sound? Yeah. So. All right. Hong Kong Massacre coming to PS4 in 2018 looks like a completely badass top-down shooting action with Hong Kong movie vibe. Think Hotline Miami meets John yes. Woo. Yes. Hotline yes. Miami Must meets game. John Woo. That sounds good right Must there. <laughs> I don't know. I played um, what was the game Ruiner recently, which uh-huh. is very, very similar, and I feel like I've got enough of that genre with Ruiner. I don't know. It didn't oh, yeah. strike me. I mean, you guys. Oh man, it didn't did you guys strike see that you. and get motivated? Did, did you it looked cool. Ruiner? It looked cool no, to I me. I didn't. Ruiner, I didn't no. check out Ruiner, so I don't. I don't know. Have a whole lot of Same. background on that. <sighs> I, I did like Hotline Miami. I didn't like Hotline Miami too that much, but this looked like fun. It looked. It just looked cool. I love Hotline Miami. It's two of my favorite games. I, I, I would have never thought I loved them as much as I do. Uh, and when I saw this, I was like, holy shit, this is just like a, you know the, what I loved in Hotline Miami. More realistic style, kind of Max Payne jumping over things. It's mine. That's a must-have game. It looked incredible to me. Yeah, it did look cool. Uh, Gardens Between. I, didn't, I don't think I remember this one. Anybody get a good feel for this one? It's a puzzle game? Uh, me, right, puzzle passing, games, moving really? On. Loco Roco 2. That was a big announcement before the press conference. I love Loco Roco uh, Part 1. I didn't really get into 2, and uh, I used to kill that game on my PSP, so it'll be definitely something I'll be picking up soon. I think it's already available, as a matter is of it? fact. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Sims 4 now. is coming to the PS4 with four expansions. Woo! Not a big Dude, fan. I haven't, played a, I haven't played a Sims game in so long. They used to be so good back in the day. I'm not going to lie to you. Sims. This game actually looked pretty good. It was Tennis World Tour. Yeah. I haven't played a what? tennis game in so a long, long time. Bird. I used to like them. Uh, yeah. Uh, you remember and, and Mario Tennis? I used year. to yes. fucking jam on Mario Tennis. Yes. Uh, this one I is also awesome. made the mistake of getting that for Virtual Boy back in the day. But that tennis game on Virtual Boy. could be fun as hell with, like, we'd make a drinking game out of it. Yeah. Could you imagine? The last like, tennis dude. game I played was the original one on the Game Boy. It came with the Game Boy. There was a tennis game. Do you remember Game Boy no, Tennis? No, Tetris came with the Game Boy. Yeah, tennis. what the hell no. did they pair Tetris. you with over there? What the fuck oh, happened Tetris. to Europe? The this explains so you, much. Why you, you guys are tennis. such a sour attitude Wait. all the time? You got tennis instead of Tetris. Yeah, <laughs> do you guys call it something different like football? Is there some sort of disconnect here? Like, do you call Man, Tetris I'm... tennis? Go on to the next game. I'm, <laughs> well, I'm looking at this. I, I like a good tennis game. I uh, I loved. I don't, I don't know if you guys remember tennis for the Wii U. It came with Wii Sports. Yeah. I fucking yeah. played. Hours of tennis. No, Everybody was, else was, was doing bowling. Mario that came tennis. with the Wii U. Uh, Mario. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Damn. A PlayStation VR it. game from Disruptive Games called Megalith. Uh, this was described as an art style set or a lovely art style set against a trailer that suggests an epic storyline where the player battles giant beasts and is one themselves. It's a shooter with destructible environments and it has a 2018 date. That looked really good to me. It looked beautiful. Uh, and, and let me just say shout out to Sony for supporting VR the way they did. Oh, man, they went hard during on this, VR. They went very – I couldn't believe how many VR games they announced during this uh, press conference. Mm. A lot of them looked very I, good and very original. Like they were mm-hmm. – Trying I some shit. I have to eat my words on Skyrim as well. Did you see they've added motion controls to yeah, Skyrim? They, oh, did it's they really? Tunnel. Yeah, it's got the um, the tunnel blinker when you move. 
Um, and it's got some creative workarounds. Like to move backwards, you've got to throw your hand back over your shoulder. Hmm. Um, and to move forward, you kind of – it's like the Vive wand where you hold a button and you kind of move. It's, it's, oh, okay. It's janky movement, but it is full locomotion, which that they actually, said at the time. That yeah. type of movement where you hold a button on your controller and then point the controller where you want to go, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Y yeah. So that's, you turn the, your head that's the type of movement forward. that yeah. gets me least, like, motion sick. Because it's very deliberate and it feels it feels natural to me because I'm I'm pointing in the direction pointing. I want to go. So it's like it, it feels very natural. Onward uses that and that's the only first person shooter that I've really dug on VR so far. I think that what that does is it gives you a point of balance and center because you know where your hand is and then if your head's turning with it, you have like you have some sort of um center. You're not getting yeah. like vertigo. It feels good. Stuff. Uh what they announced with VR, it's the the I've been getting, kind of waiting for a lot of games to come out to potentially dip my toes into it. So they got that new VR headset, the improved VR headset. It's not mm -hmm. like the display. I don't think is improved, but like some of the ergonomics and and the you uh, have base eighteen station is... cords coming from the back of it. It's just yeah. one, so that's a good thing. Uh, Bout of blood, airship space battles, shooting from the from a regular from a regular gun and on ship ship to ship level. This is a hard article to read. <laughs> yeah, that was the, uh, that was the I if, we try it. if we summarize it that was um sp uh, sort of sky pirates it was like steampunk pirates in vr yeah, yeah. Mm. so you can have the fantasy of being sky captain and sort of going off and attacking other ships it looked interesting i'm not going to say it's, it's not a system seller um but it was interesting uh ultra wings vr is basically a flying game in vr pilot wings. uh it's sprint like pilot vector wings in vr yeah it did Fun. it did remind me of pilot wings a lot sprint yeah. vector looking completely in Utterly bonkers on PSVR. Uh, I don't know what it that is. I saw that. I saw that. Moss. That was the one with the oh, uh, the little mouse. mouse. Yeah, another that, VR that game. That looks cool, Brian. Yeah. That looks that looks pretty nice. I like that. Uh, Resident Evil Seven for VR has some new DLC coming out that stars yep. Chris Redfield. Uh, it looks like it's gonna be a little more action oriented, and it's gonna I've have to say, brand new monsters to shoot. Uh, I, I need to hear Before Gary on this. Before the show, me and BC caught up on that. That's probably the DLC that I actually it was down to twenty five dollars this um, this week. I found um, Resident Evil Seven, so I've actually picked it up, um, but I haven't played it yet. So it's on Steam. I can still refund it, so I'm safe. Um, but this thing with Chris Redfield, where it's it's Resident Evil Seven, but you are the kind of muscle bound superhero with loads of ammo and loads of guns, and you're you're mowing down like ten, fifteen enemies. It's none of that kind of scary jump scares. It's just more like there's loads of zombies coming at you, you kill them. You know, there's all black goo shit. That's yeah. actually sold me Resident Evil 7. And I know a lot of people will say it's it's shit. It's completely gone off the mark. But for me, going in and after, is it Lucas, the brother? I think it is he's going yeah. after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was one uh, of the most interesting in, characters in the game too. Hunting him down and having like all the monsters completely unchained and unleashed and giving me loads of ammo to fight them. I think that, that yep. has sold me Resident Evil 7 finally. And right anybody who's played any Resident Evils in the past four, five, six has played as Chris Redfield. You know that that's what he does. He gets shit tons of guns and ammo and blows shit up. So it kind of works with the mythos of Resident Evil. Chris is kind of a badass. The dude literally punched boulders in Resident Evil 5 in order to beat the last boss. So he's kind of a badass. Continue. Uh, two other PSVR games, Dead Hungry and Stifled. <laughs> Uh, Stifled, those, I think, is a job simulator thing. Oh, no, Dead Hungry is a job simulator. And they're both out? Yeah, they both released that same night. Nice. Dead Hungry is uh, created by the team behind uh, Pixel Junk. And there's oh, really? basically, yeah, there's zombies coming towards you, and you're like at a, I want to say like a hot dog stand. And when they get to you, they can either kill you or you can make food you really make fast food. <laughs> and throw food at them to stay alive. So it's one of those zany type of VR experiences. I'm sure a lot of people enjoy it. Who knows? Maybe uh, sometime in the future. And Stifle and is a sound-based thriller in the pitch black, black with white. a very unique yeah. art style. This is cool. So you're going to be using sound to navigate yeah, and stay away from danger? That could be very scary. Wow. That's, That's for Gary there. That's, that should be Gary's <laughs> first VR game for yeah. PS4. And uh, League of War VR Arena. This looks really cool. This oh, is like yeah, it, it looks is. like basically a board game where you, you stand over the else. board and you play like a RTS, like on a table. Like it looked mm -hmm. cool. 
and you can play with somebody else. So you can get right. You, you see the, them on the other side of the table. Yeah, they're on the other t- other side, and you, you're playing against them. It's pretty damn cool. Uh, they showed the final. Deep. Yeah, that didn't look good. I'm not gonna Booty lie to you. <laughs> Uh, really they also showed kind of uh, Final Fantasy 15 episode. That, that looked good. Yeah, I really liked Final Fantasy 15. That story was really good. <clears throat> Got me choked up. I'm waiting for the PC version to play it, so no spoilers. Oh, yeah, yeah. I meant to ask you during or, or the Resident Evil 7, are they going to bring the VR version that's a PC? Or is that just yes, locked it was behind a one, PSVR? It was a one-year exclusive, so yes. Like, confirmed by... Confirmed, yeah, it was a one year exclusive deal. It was coming in January. Okay. Good. That's confirmed. Oh man, I can't wait to hear how it plays on like the HTC Vive or I wouldn't imagine Oculus. it play any different, but it'd probably look a little better. Yeah, it looked better. Yeah. Uh and Vector looked like uh basically Thumper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with that. No. Uh Ure? Are? Are? R. Are? This game looked cool, but uh man, that's a bad name. Yeah, it sucks. Uh kids turning into dragons and flying over the clouds, yet another really striking art style and quite possibly some of the journey vibes. It looked cool. It looked like it reminded me of uh Panzer Dragon is yeah. it was it Saga? Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah Panzer Dragon. It reminded Dragon me of that a lot. Uh they showed Splunky too. That was a big surprise. I don't know how well that's gonna do though. I've never heard anyone even cite Splunky one as Something they really they gave one game of the year. The yeah. year it came out in a it's lot of places. Really, it's really, very really popular. Where did it come out? Did it come out on PC? Uh, I want to say 2014. It came out. I think it came out on a lot of the portables. I'm pretty sure okay, it came that's out on why PlayStation. I didn't know. Okay, it was on Vita. I, I have it Vita? on PS4 and Vita. Yeah, and that was all from the pre-show, wasn't it, Brian? Yeah, that's all from the pre-show. So now we're into the actual show. Ghost of Tsushima <laughs> looked badass. Oh. My. Oh. Oh my god! I cannot wait, man. That... This is the new game Ooh. from Sucker Punch. Uh, basically, it looks like it's a historical fiction game involving samurai and the invasion of the Mongol horde. It looked incredible graphically. It looked stunning, but also tonally, it just got me amped. Like by the end of that trailer, I was so ready to play this game. Yeah, dude. Sam, old Japanese like samurai culture, so fascinating. So it just awesome. reminded me of like Onimusha. You guys remember Mo- Onimusha? Yeah, Onimusha. 100%. Yeah, that really game wasn't good, that, but this that, game yeah. did look good. Yeah, that yeah. was Resident Evil with fucking samurais, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I don't care what it is, man. If it's got samurais it's like in it, I'm down. Onimusha's the shit, man. You got to show some love to Onimusha, man. Like, like I loved <laughs> The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise, and it that's had Tom Cruise movie. in it. I mean, it's... Uh... No, that's a good movie. That's don't bring The Last Samurai. The Last Samurai is not a good movie, If but Tom Cruise was sexy in it. He the was. Samurai he is one of my all-time <laughs> favorite movies. I've seen that movie at least twenty times. At you least tell me, twenty times. The Last Samurai is one of your all-time favorite movies. Gary, it's a great yes. movie. It's got everything. Ken More Watanabe. Than Braveheart? I wanted to go and join Ken Watanabe's village. Right. I wanted to have good conversations with him. That was. Yeah. That is perfect. But what Here's would you the do thing, when, though. When Could you take finally hits the fan, Gary? Would you, I'd do what Tom Cruise out? did, and you know, just slay my kind of newly acquired native brothers and return back to America. I think that's how it ended, didn't it? He kind of Pretty just, sure. you know, yeah. It's the American way. Um, yeah. yeah. But like, hear me out though. It had that movie. What if it was the last ninja or something not as fascinating as maybe samurai culture, would you have liked it as much? Um, I don't know. Did it have Tom Cruise in it with the nice goatee and the nice hair? Yes. Probably. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, next we have Concrete Genie, which I don't even remember seeing. Did anybody? It's it's a little boy who like it's like, like drawing. Of, yeah, yeah. He drew on the side of the walls and he was yeah. making things out of concrete. All right, oh, Erica. Cool, but... I don't remember either. An FMV game. That's that's the no. the full motion video game that you. It works with your phone. It's like a new PlayStation initiative where you actually play a game with oh, your yeah. cell phones. Yeah, uh, I changed I, that. I heard some good things about it, Briar. <laughs> yeah. You know? All right. Yeah. Hey, I've been wrong before. Once. <laughs> Uh, Blood and Truth. This game actually got me psyched. This is another PSVR game. Blood and Truth. It really reminded me of the Heist it is. VR demo. It, it it is the actual game from London Heist. Oh it's my the god, that's the game. best demo. Like that is for me top three to five content I've ever played in VR. Yeah, like wow. I mean, it's right up there with Super Hot with Resident Evil Seven. That Heist demo. It was only what fifteen minutes long. Yeah, it was it's so that. fun though because like this is the full game of. The- I've- Gotta say is that the though, shooting the, range? 
uh, the no, heist was, like was a, the heist yeah. was like this little mini story Loving where you put on show. the headset and you're you're presented like you're tied to a chair and you got this big mob heavy like intimidating you and then you flash to another scene where you're you're sitting at a table and you're talking to a guy who's presenting you with like you know here's here's the heist here's how it's going to go down and you know you're sitting right there yeah you can pick up the cigar and smoke the yeah, cigar I remember you and playing like, there's that. a lighter yeah. to play with and then like then you get into like this little shooting gallery where you're kind of behind a desk and there's like all these guys running around yep. like on a balcony and then you jump into a car and you're shooting from in the car and then like there's a bunch of like little vignettes but it, it wasn't mm -hmm. a full game it's just a demo but man like what they showed looked it. so much fun so if they expand on that and make a full game out of that, I am in. I'm sold. I'm nervous with the tone, though, because um, yeah. I loved London Heist. Mm -hmm. Like That was really good. That felt like Snatch or Lockstock, where it had comedy, mm. but it was yeah. more grounded. This looks a bit more like um, Beyond Good and Evil 2, like where the guy – maybe I pick it up more because I'm from London, but the guy was a caricature of a London sort of – a, a black London gangster was the the voice. It just really didn't. I don't know. It seemed more comical from someone there. It's like imagine like a stereotypical American yeah. yeehaw kind of cowboy, similar kind of thing. So I don't know. I think it, be, it could be really good, but I'm just nervous that they took away that gritty. Because I don't know. You were generally in the London Heist demo. You're actually quite fearful at times. You know, they had the intimidating kind of brick top like snatch character. You know, the, the mob yeah. boss. Yeah. You actually um, get. Um, you actually get. Uh, an award or a trophy if you don't flinch and jump when he jumps in your face to, to intimidate you. That's so right. I forgot really about does. that. Yeah, I think, Brian, you told me the first time you like <laughs> jumped out of your seat or some <laughs> shit. Yeah, my, I, you know, I let my dad do it too. My dad's a big guy. He's bigger than me. And uh, when he was there, he, you know, jumped back and got intimidated. So, yeah, it's, it's, to me, it was pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. So that one looks good. <laughs> Uh, Curse no. of Osiris. They showed off Curse of Osiris, the first Destiny 2 expansion. That looks phenomenal. The I know oh, Wilson God. must have been creaming his jeans seeing he Osiris for the first about time, this, right? Yeah. Osiris is my boy, dude. We're so tight. I'll be glad to have him back, man. I miss that dude. Yeah, yeah, you were just talking about that two weeks ago, you know, having Osiris back and how you were kind of anticipating his return and then turn right around and you got this. It was pretty epic, man. Super pretty exciting. It's going to be it awesome. Did, it looked really good. And, you know, that... The nice thing about that too is it also coincides with the launch of season two for Destiny Two, where they've they've also said there's a bunch of changes coming to like the investment system and the rewards and how how that's going to go, and that that could be pretty cool. So I'm I'm looking forward to December fifth in Destiny Two. I got to play a lot of games between now and December fifth, though. I got to tell you that. Mm -hmm. My back catalog is just fucked. Yeah, I got this week. I I'm guaranteeing you. I I put it off for like five days, but I'm playing Wolfenstein this week, and then I'm gonna start Assassin's Creed right after that. Oh, because uh, I am Take really. Time I want to play both though. of those. I will save that game. It's a short campaign, so you want to. I didn't know that you were an Assassin's Creed fan, Briar. Should I maybe try that out? I haven't been an Assassin's Creed fan since. since I love Assassin's Creed too, uh, but everything they did since that. Well, Black Flag I liked a lot too. But everything they've done since that just it didn't appeal to me. And what I did play, it was it was either like a buggy mess or the story was bullshit or some combination of both. But for everything I've seen in this about this game, it just reminds me of The Witcher Three, and I fucking adore The Witcher Three. The next uh, game on the list, I'm curious, are you guys on, interested? I skipped in over it? Far Cry Five. Oh, oh okay. yeah, uh, <clears throat> Far yes, Cry please. Five. They didn't go into much about the single player stuff. What they showed was playing it multiplayer and having some fun with friends. And it did look fun, but man, it flew in the face of the message they've been sending about that game, where it's going to be all about this gritty like reality of being in mm -hmm. Montana and you know fighting off these you know you know these cultists, white supremacists, back country, guys. Well, uh, back country cultists, man. Yeah, like that looks so cool. I mean, I'm all about having some fun in the in the woods with some friends. Like it did look fun what they were doing, but I mean, they could be anything that looked like fun. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does look good. I am. I am going to get that game. Uh, I have to. I've been on board with Far Cry since the original. I've enjoyed them. So. Uh, Monster are, Hunter World. Got are any of you guys interested yeah. in that? To yes, me, it looks I'm amazing. very interested in this. Yeah. Yeah. That looks I, fucking amazing. I'm going to wait for the PC release, but I'm going to get it. Yeah. When's Shocker. it released on PC? Uh, March, I believe. March, and there will be a PlayStation uh, exclusive beta on December 9th. 
So that's not that far away. That's and Eloy, right. uh, Aloy, Aloy is actually in this game too. Uh, from Horizon Zero Dawn, she's a playable character on PlayStation, and that's really, really awesome. Damn. Yeah, I've been with Monster Hunter since back in the PSP days, man. I, I only played one of them. I played one of the ones for the DS, and I, I don't or Same. the 3DS, and I don't remember what the name name of it was. It was fun, but it was just too deep of a game to have on a mobile console for me. You know, yeah, like yeah. I. Mobile consoles yeah. are all about like quick bite-sized content for me while I'm sitting on the couch and maybe I don't get back to it for a week or two. It, that was a deep game and it was fun, but it's a ton of it's very deep. You know, yeah. more fun with friends in the party put, helping you out, um, telling you yeah. what to do. And I put the most time into the Wii U version, which was Monster Hunter Three Ultimate. Mm-hmm. I think I put like 400 hours into that one, but I usually put about 100 hours into every Monster Hunter game just because it appeals to me the whole. Just looting the and grind, collecting yeah. stuff and looting and grinding. And I can probably spend 100 hours before I burn myself out. But, yeah, you're right. I think on a, a proper you know, a proper platform, I could put another four or 500 hours in easy. Yeah. When you uh, met, I'm going to be looking you... forward to playing this with my Destiny friends. I think it's going to really appeal yeah. to like, like the same groups of people who like Destiny are going to move right into this. It's game. a serious grind. And i got to ask Gary because I know he's, he's alluded to – us many times and how much he likes to grind. He loves um, MMOs and, and whatnot. When you met your your lady, Gary, and you guys had your first dance, did you grind on her? I bumped and grind like R. Kelly in the 90s. It was I good. Don't see nothing my mind was telling me no, but my body, my <laughs> body was telling me yes. Buddy! <laughs> Way to go, Gary. Brother, do your fucking thing. Uh, they showed uh, another trailer for WW2, Call of Duty WW2, which actually comes out. Is that Tuesday? Is that in two days from now? I think it's out. Oh, it's well, out. Yeah, it's Call of Duty. Out Call of Duty came out on Friday. Yeah. yeah. God, I'm, I'm yeah. still confused with games coming out on Friday. I'm used to the Tuesday thing. Mm. I asked Same. Kate, be, I, I said, why, this is this morning, Brad. I said, why haven't we bought Call of Duty? She said, I don't feel like we should spend money on a game that we probably won't play because Destiny 2 is out. And I was like, good point. Smart woman. I've got the money sitting there to buy it, but I'm looking at Call of Duty. I bought that Ocarina rather than buy Call of Duty. Like, it's just, play I know it, it's going to be... Play it, Play it for the I people know, who I, I, I bought it, display. but I bought it on PlayStation, so Gary won't play it with me. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we saw uh, Onrush, an all-new game. It's a... Uh, a truly mad-looking racer that is entirely arcade it looks and yeah, beautiful, I, but it, it's it not looks a like racer. a really cool racer. Yeah, I drive like an old man. Me too. Sixty. Uh, we saw years. another look at Star Wars Battlefront Two. No big deal. Spider Man though. Spider Man looks good. I'm not a big Spider-Man like comic too. book guy. Uh, I like Spider Man more than most comic books, but playing Spider Man games can be intensely fun because of the freedom of movement. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, this game looks like it could be fun. I'm gonna wait for reviews on it. Uh, but the trailer they showed for it looked like it could be cool. If the Insomnia. movement's that good in game, man, I will play the shit out of that game because that looks like that could be addictively fun just flying through the city uh, and, like that. You know, the, the pedigree zoop, zoop, zoop. of Insomniac Games, guys, I mean, they have a history in this kind of superhero type of stuff. They're the guys who made Ratchet just... and Clank, is that right? Not Insomniac? Not, yeah. No, not just, I mean, no. Insomniac. I don't think they did Ratchet and Clank. We can, no. we can, get, we can get on it. We can get our researchers right. on it right now. Guys, look it up. I feel look like the world was more fun when we just said wrong shit to each other than Ratchet and Clank. Look it up. They made Sunset Overdrive. They did make Ratchet Spiral and Clank. the Dragon and Spider Man. Okay. You know, they're, 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 they build these like fantastical worlds with these crazy characters. And, and this looks amazing. Ratchet and Clank amazing. was fun as shit, man. I, I love those games. Spider Man, I don't know. I could go for this. I could go for this. I, I want to see reviews, though. I'm not buying this until I see reviews for it. Uh, they now, showed now Detroit the Become Human shit. again. This one, mm. what? Okay, mm. so we see several vignettes out of Detroit Gone Human. This time, we saw a robot who apparently had been damaged and was in a basically a domestic abuse situation where the child was getting abused by a father, physically abused by the father. God, I gotta tell you, I have no fucking interest in playing this game. It was just a little too real for me, man. It was like, a little too real for me. I swear, Briar caught me off guard like a motherfucker just now. I, I could have swore he was about to say, "I gotta tell you, I'm really, I really want to see." It. I, I'm, I'm very excited for this game. Uh, yeah. I think it, you know, yeah. Like, what like, about you know, it gets I'm, you excited for it? Well, I, I like those kind of, you know, dramatic situations, and, uh, you know, after you know the last couple of games that they've made, 
they kind of failed. You know, the whole situation uh, with what's her face, um, Ellen Page, her game, it wasn't really that good, and people didn't really enjoy it. And then you you got situations like um, I'm trying to think of the name of the the one that came out afterwards, and now they have it on PSVR free this month. Um, what's what's the name of that game, Briar, that came out on PS4? Quantum Break. And it was no, that's no, it was like a, a cinematic film. You kind of watch it and play it out in the woods, a bunch of kids. And, oh, and there are windows yeah. until dawn. Yeah, until dawn came out, and it kind of shit all over Quantic Dream when it comes to the way these these games, these films. People love games. until dawn. Yeah, and so I think Quantic Dream has something to prove right now because of you know the their, prob- their last problem it- though is that like this just looks like a choose your own adventure. I'd rather play it as that sort of game. I hope there's no gameplay in it. Like I'd probably buy it if it was something that was like a Telltale game, but just with really yeah. good animation. Yeah, I mean, that to me could be interesting if it's a short campaign. If it's like a five-hour game with androids, I'd probably buy it. But yeah, if like it's None of the long, scenarios have looked interesting to me at all, though. I think Man, I, that situation like, in that like, house you know, looked interesting to me, Briar. It looked, like man, it looked depressing to me. to me. It looked fucking yeah, awesome. I, I don't want any ass, part of that. Like, yeah, that's not little... the kind of media I like to get in on. <laughs> it was just a little too real for me. Like yeah. I was like, eh, I kind of want to kick I this could guy's dig ass. It. I could dig it for five hours, like Blade Runner. Like you know, that equal deep, dark, dystopian future. Um, I could get in and get out. Like I like games like that that make me think, and then I can put them down and never touch them again. But most agreed, people hate agreed. it. They want like a thousand hours out of a sixty dollar game. So whatever. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, that's exactly. Uh, I'm not what about the time investment. I'm too. about the, just like walking away, seeing I just watched a child die sixteen times because I couldn't figure out this puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh man! Now you put it that way, Briar. Shit. <laughs> Make sure Reminds you me. The it takes guide. me. It takes me back to um, Phantasmagoria, the point-and-click adventure, where every time you fucked up, something would happen, and it'd be some gruesome scene, and you'd have to do it over and over and over again. You guys remember that game, Phantasmagoria? Yeah. yeah. No, I never heard of it. Really? It's a point-and-click adventure, and uh, just uh, YouTube it, man. It's it's. Sierra games in the 90s for PC is classic. Uh, they showed God of War again. The, a brand new gameplay scene from God of War it looked great. Uh, yeah. I'm very, like, the more they show this game, the more I'm, I'm excited I am. I can't wait. Bearded Kratos. Fit mm-hmm. right in, Briar. Fits right in. Uh, new DLC for Horizon Zero Dawn, Frozen yes, Wilds. Yes, please. Uh, that's coming out very soon, right? Isn't that coming out before mm-hmm. Christmas? Early yes. December. I hope that sells yes. more copies of the game. I hope they do a big marketing push behind that because that game was fantastic. It kind of yes, got kind of got overshadowed because it came out at the same time as Zelda. I wish this DLC <laughs> yeah. was coming out at a different time, not holidays. Like if this was coming out in like January, I think it'd be perfect. I, uh, yeah, another one that I think I like the story more than I like the game. Horizon Zero Dawn was amazing. Yeah, I really really like the story of that. I game, like but... shooting shit. I like the story. I hated the side story, and I just mainlined the fucking main story because every time I ran into a side quest, it was like, this is boring. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I the just, gameplay I... was so engaging. You know, you're tethering two little spots. You're tricking enemies into running into these electrical wires and stuff. It was just I, really exciting I'm an, for me. I'm a reliable narrator because I had the same with The Last of Us where I played it because I loved the story. I hated the gameplay. So, again, I've, I've got a dispopular opinion. I liked the uh, the trials things that you had to do where you'd go to those hunting grounds and they'd give you challenges to do with all the roaming dinosaur bots. That was my favorite part where you like shoot an arrow and it rolls all the logs down the hill and like wipes out a herd. Yeah, saying oh. that, that's the only thing that I think Destiny could have taken is I thought Lost Sectors were going to be the cauldrons from Horizon Zero Dawn where you go oh, in and good. it's like a yeah. sprawling mystery cavern that's like, it, it's not procedurally generated, it's just something that's been crafted for you and then there's a big boss at the end that you've got to learn a mechanic for and it could be a way of teaching you a mechanic and maybe there's only three lost sectors per planet but they're all like the cauldrons in Horizon Zero Dawn yeah, that would have been baller, too bad, I've just invented that, never mind Oh, this comes out in two days, chat saying Yep, saying. chat's saying it comes out in two days Hmm, I might have to play through that Thank you, chat uh, we got this. another look at the Shadow Colossus remake. Like, how many times are you going to remake this game? Yeah. Come on. Well, this is the first this. time it's actually a remake. The other ones are just about, H- it just came HD out with this updates. game again. No, nope. whatever the fuck you call it, HD no, this remix, is remade HD from the, uh, remake. Uh, 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 fuck this off. Is remade fuck from off. The ground it's up. the same shit. Shit. It's the same fucking game re-released. No. Director's yeah. cut. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah, it is. The PS3 version was a re, uh, just a re-release. 
at a higher definition. This is completely redone from the ground up. Every it looks like a PS2 picture. game to me, Beasley. No, the hell it doesn't. You yes, it does. It it's a fucking no, it doesn't. flat polygon textures. It looks fucking. It that looks game was amazing. super impressive when it came out on the PS2. It was less impressive on the Brian PS3, the and it's section. less impressive now on the PS4. Ash Ashcliff said, "Brian, leave Shadow of the Colossus alone." I, this game was. Amazing we all left it alone. when we it came out it on the PS2. Now. <laughs> Gary. Yeah. It looks it looks incredible now. It still Completely looks like a redone to me. I'm sorry. I got no interest in it. I love you anyway, Briar. I, I loved the game when it first came out. But I'm I, I mean I got no interest in these rehashes Same. and remakes and remasters or whatever the fuck. <laughs> or whatever the fuck. Alright, what'd you guys think of the Last of Us Two trailer? Beastly, you want to go first? <sighs> I, you know, upon looking at it and watching it, I felt like it could have been The Last of Us, but I was like, I don't know who these characters are. It looks very right. gritty. Uh, you know, it's very violent and visceral. And, and I was like, whatever this story is, it remind, it looks like a Naughty Dog game. And then when, you know, everything went down and you saw the, the violence... And I mean violence that was going on in this trailer, and yeah. you know, women almost getting impaled through the gut, and just everything was open season for anyone, anything. Yeah, it was then, violent. Like it was real violent. Like one, yeah, at one but, point, one of the women says, "Clip her wings." Yeah, and they, they hold out her arm and they like bash her her, her, her arm with a hammer, and it's like you see that, and they don't do it once; they do it three times, and yeah, the woman's it, fucking screaming. Smashing yeah, her elbows. Yeah, uh, it, it it just goes to show, um, I guess, the evolution of what was in Neil Druckmann's head for this world. And in the end, when you see the, the the clickers just running through the dark, coming toward the light to where they were, you know, I was sitting at work in my office, and I, you know, I was on break, and I was looking at this thing, and just this feeling of euphoria came over me, like I almost came in my pants. I probably should have ran to the bathroom. Bumps. She has some goosebumps. Yeah, my nipples yeah, got chills. hard. Everything. That's when you're passionate I started, about I something. Calling people, I sent my dad. You know, I, I love you. Text. It was just insane. I, I sent you guys. I, I mean, I showed it on Twitter. Let you guys know that you know, it's back. It's here. I, I'm excited actually to see the direction they're going with this game. I'm happy that the gloves are off. You know, everything seems to. I be... I was happy about that too. Be sleep. This trailer got a ton of hate. Hate, yes, like, real hate. Like, why did it have to be so violent? Why would you show that to show us the Last of Us Two? Mm -hmm. When I watched that trailer, I was immediately hooked on what is happening here. Like, why? The story has to be fucking insane. Who are these people? Like, why are they in the situation they are? Who is that chick with the fucking biceps? I mean, yeah. good lord, she's. Like I was instantly, like I was instantly hooked. Who is this woman? Like what is going on here? And then they pop up Last of Us Part Two at the end of the trailer, and I was shocked. I didn't know it was gonna be Last of Us. I was down. Like, yeah, I don't give a shit if you thought it was too violent. I was fucking a hundred percent into this trailer. Like a hundred percent. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder if that's the tone that they're gonna set for the entire game. That it's gonna well, be even darker than the original. Like I hope God, so too. How do you because get darker got... than the original? <laughs> You could, it's, man. That's I, what you do with the sequel, man. Bigger, better. You make it, if it's a dark it's horror a game, you game, make it darker, it man. Yeah, but and I, that, I, that I game got me... Hope. I was so just going to say, that game got me really immersed, man. Like, uh, there were moments when, like, I had legit fear. There were moments that I was attached to characters and yeah. very invested in their well-being. And so I'm pumped, man. I'm all, all on board for the feels that come with uh, The Last of Us. The the only thing that I'm hoping is that Naughty Dog doesn't cave to the liberal, you know, this political correct culture that nothing can offend people. You know, films come out, you know, directors put movies Dude, together. As a liberal, I, that's a microaggression, and I'm really upset about it right now. I'd like, you can apologize. <laughs> I, I apologize. <laughs> I know how you guys are. I'm sorry, and I love you. Liberals. And, and, and we're in a safe <laughs> space right now. But... Um, Films come out and there's violence in it, and, and you know, no one really comes out and says this movie is just too violent. It is yeah, the vision. All the time. It's the vision of the person who's creating it. You know, I mean, if a person decides to put, you know, a black lead or a white lead or a person who's doing a certain type of thing or a movie that's incredibly violent or or a comedy, that's what they their creation in their mind was. And who are we to say that it's the wrong thing? Max Scoville from IGN said this is not the you know the the 
the direction that The Last of Us needs to be going in with all this violence. You didn't create The Last of Us. I mean, you, Last you of Us to... one. Think about that game. Remember that game, man. It was a violent, horrific it sure world, was, man. And it and what that did, man, was that it set up like a place for these characters. You felt real danger in that game. Like you didn't know what was going to happen at any point in time. This trailer was amazing. I, I know that a lot of people are hating on it, but I thought like it sold me on The Last of Us too, much more than. Ellie playing fucking guitar on the end of a bed day. I'll tell you <laughs> yeah, that. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know. I agree. Gary, I, I'm gonna I have to be. Say anything, Gary? What are your thoughts? I'm gonna probably have to be devil's advocate there. Um, and again, not trying to be topical or not trying to say anything. Now, I, I'm not really a sensitive person. I'm not offended. Um, you know, you want to show me breaking a woman's arm? You know, do it. Um, put a claw hammer in someone's head. Whatever. You know, it's kind of it is what it is. Yeah. Um, but for me, I liked the intrigue and the mystery I, I okay my brain reacts far more to things that i don't see or things that i'm thinking more than things that you show me you know you can be as visual as you want i think that's a lazy storyteller's tool oh, yeah but thing. gary if they show it at first they don't have to ever show it again because you the know the threat is, is there no i mean yeah. it could be shock value but it sets up the precedent of here is the threat once you show it once you never have to show it again. You already know that that threat is there. Then that was mm-hmm. that's what, a lot of people are thinking that this scene is like Ellie's mother, right? Is that yeah. this is like kind of like this isn't the present, it's the past and like these are the bad guys you're going to be fighting and we need to set up like how bad these fuckers actually are. Yeah. I mean that could be. I just I I personally was more interested in the, the guitar scene that you talk about because the, the song I found was moving. The performance I thought was really strong from Ellie. Um, and the, the, you know, the blood dripping from her, the house of corpses and the ghost, you know, the shadow of Joel or the ghost of Joel. We don't know yet. That to me had a lot more questions there that I had that there just looked like the world's very gritty. The world's very violent. There was some torture porn in it. And it's like, well, I don't know. It's it's to just me, I, my, I my look at it like this, Gary. It's like the, the new It movie that came out. Uh, that you know, it was a PG thirteen film, but it did show a scene where at the very beginning of the film, a little boy was snatched into the sewer. Georgie, his arm was ripped off, and you know it happened all within the the course of four or five seconds. But his arm was ripped off, and the kid was you know crawling away, and he got yanked into the sewer and eaten alive by this this clown. Uh, it sets the tone. It lets you know exactly what you could expect in that world, that the gloves are off. And it didn't make the film a bad film. It didn't make it extremely, you know, gory or too much. It just let us know that within within the parameters of this, the, this creation, this is possible. This is what you can expect. I don't think The Last of Us 2 is going to be just, you know, like hostile or something. I think that they're going to have cut scenes like the one we saw here that will, you know, show things that happen in that type of environment and then we're going to go on through the game and play it like we did in the original, throwing bricks into people's faces and probably smacking people in the head with hammers. You know, if you have a game that's that visceral, you actually play the game and you're smacking people in the face with bricks. These type of things can probably happen in cut scenes. And I don't think they went too far at all. But I did like the song. Yeah, um, fair enough. just my <laughs> take on it. Also. Finally, the biggest game, without a doubt, that they mentioned what had to be Guacamelee 2. Uh, absolutely uh, game of the year, whatever year it was released. It was a fantastic game. Metroidvania game with a Mexican luchador vibe. Uh, I, still haven't, I still haven't played that. God damn, it's fucking well. awesome. I got it's it on so VHS for I still haven't played it. Uh, the only thing I'm kind of not happy about is that this is a PS4 release or a PS4 game. I want this thing to come to the Vita into the Switch. This needs to be a portable game. <clears throat> yeah, I would. I think it, it'd play it really well on the will. Switch. Yeah, the Switch yeah. for sure. Yeah, I'm not going to say no to Vita. I, I, I kind of have, have <laughs> learned to hate and loathe Sony more and more each each uh, day. Like the fact that before this conference they said that they don't see portable gaming as a viable platform, I think is well, kind of them. bullshit. <laughs> well, exactly, it's kind of bullshit when you see what the Switch is doing. It's just like Sony can't figure it out. Is more the point there. I mean, they had a great true. platform with this, you're, you're with the Vita. There. And they pretty much hung it out to dry. So, yeah, but whatever, man. I mean, yeah. I played Guacamelee on the Vita. And, yeah, I mean, it fucked up my fingers. Something fierce. Because that game was hard. <laughs> and you had to hit every button. Every button. <laughs> Professional claw. But, goddamn, it played perfectly. 
Like it controlled yeah. perfectly, and the music was awesome. The graphics were awesome. The world was awesome. It was Metroidvania with a fucking luchador. It was awesome. The game was amazing. And I'm so happy to see a, a sequel coming out. I hope I hope it so, sells super well. I hope it gets a ton of praise and it sells super well because I feel like the first one just kind of flew under the radar. Hey, yeah. Briar, if you got about five seconds, click on the image I put in our, our little notes. I can't uh, do that because it'll fuck up the video. For oh, me. yeah. Well, you can do it afterwards. <laughs> no problem. It's it's some nudes. But nudes? continue. Oh, perfect. Never mind. I'm showing them on screen. Don't fuck up the show. You can wait. <laughs> <laughs> Showing those online right now. <laughs> All right, and I think that's the end of uh, Paris Games Week. You guys, yeah, well, what'd you guys think of like the whole show, man? Like, I'm pretty excited. Like, there's a lot of damn good games in here. There's some good VR stuff coming out. I'm glad to see some of the DLC coming out, oh, uh, especially like the VR stuff, man. I'm really hyped about. I can't wait to play they, some they of that VR stuff. They showed 13, I believe, 13 new VR games during the pre-show alone. Yeah. So. They're really supporting it, and you know, unlike the Vita and other mistakes that they've made in the past, it seems like VR is going to be a big push uh, for Sony. Overall, I was really pleased with this. It was kind of an unexpected gem for me, Briar. You know, Paris Games Week is one of those conventions that are smaller in the year, and especially when you get busy and you you, you got a hectic life, you can forget about it. And that's well, exactly see, what especially happened Especially with the me. PlayStation experience coming up in December. Like, I yeah. just wasn't even on my radar, Beastly. It was not. Pope Bear hit, hit me up on Twitter. He's like, hey, you should probably check out the uh, the Paris Games Week PlayStation thing. Because he, you know, he was pretty sure that there's going to be some Destiny news in there. But good God. I mean, yeah. I was blown away. Uh, what was it? Ghost of Tsushima? Is that what the kid? Yes. That that's a must a play. Shame, like, I'm, yeah. I'm on board. Uh, the VR heist game. What was that called? Yeah. It's like London Heist. Blood and Truth? Is, yeah. Yeah. Blood and Truth. Spider-Man looked real good. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn DLC, which we knew was coming, but The Last of Us Part 2. See, there's another trailer for that. Is that coming in 2018, you think, Beastly? It's, that's 28. I, I would suspect sometime in late 2018. You think holidays like they're, 2018? They're, yeah, they're, they're pushing that. You think they'll uh, You think they'll continue to do uh, multiplayer on that? They fucking better. <laughs> They better. They better take away those bitch bombs. That's what I'm saying. I, they better add more. <laughs> call every weapon a bitch weapon. Um, I, I was totally caught off guard the day of this event. I was at work and I, you know, I, I saw some things on Twitter. I was like, "Is Paris Games Week this week?" I was like, "It's today." Oh my god! And then when I, I looked, I expected very little from Sony, because it's really hard to you know keep people excited all year long when there's five or six of these these conventions and conferences they have to show stuff at. But they showed so much stuff that I didn't expect. All the VR love. And, and I did not expect to see anything new from The Last of Us 2. Of course. Of course, I'm a huge fan of Horizon. Uh, Ghost of Hiroshima. I was about to say Hiroshima. What is the, the title of it? Tsushima? The, yeah. That, oh, man. That was one of good. the first games I saw that kind of blew, blew me away. And to be totally honest, I've been on the fence about snatching up an Xbox One X. Uh, because I've been watching a lot of videos and, and looking at you know some of the uh, comparisons between that PC and and PS4 Pro and you know for uh, for the multiplats at least this thing is pretty damn awesome and when I watched this Paris Games Week I I came back to my senses and I was like these games are only these are PlayStation games I can buy a more powerful console for home but none of these games are going to be on it and and it kind of brought me back around and made me look. You know, this is where the games are at for me. This is where my this is my ecosystem, and uh, Paris Games Week it kind of blew my blew my mind. Yeah, it looked good. Wilson, Gary, what you guys think? I think that we've got three more topics, and we've got twenty minutes to deliver them. So, a natural transition and a challenge for us right here <laughs> is The Last of Us Two looks to be a game that has a strong female protagonist uh, in Ellie. What do you think? of gender choices in gaming. Beast, this is one of your topics, isn't it? And I thought this was an amazing one, and I think we should give it the time it deserves. Perfect, perfect transition, and very, very true. So, uh, gamer gen gender choices. This is something I think about every now and then. What is your preferable gender to play in a video game, and does it really matter at all? So, for me, I, I have this pretty standard rule that I, I choose. Any game that has multiplayer or competitive modes or, you know, just a character for an RPG, I'll usually pick the opposite sex. Why? 
because I'm a man and I'd rather spend my time looking at a female than another man. That's just, to me, it's elementary in my mind. And, you know, I've been that way since I was a kid. I'm a dude. I don't want to walk around looking at some guy's shoulders the whole damn game. If there could be a nice chick to watch. And, you know, in my 40 years of life or almost 40 years, it really hasn't failed me. I've been enjoying playing as female protagonists and destiny and, my fighting games and anything else. And uh, it really hasn't steered me wrong, but I want to know you guys' thoughts. What do you choose? Is there a rule that you guys go by or do you just choose whatever it feels like for the day? Yeah, that's kind of my thing. Um, it just kind of go with the flow. Um, with destiny, um, I had made a, uh, I had made like all male characters like the first time I had played through and uh, I ended up deleting one of my hunters and making a huntress she's a bad bitch dude she's so good like i just i felt like i don't know what it was about like the female hunter and like the movement and stuff like that it just felt a little bit more natural or whatever but um a game like conan the barbarian i was playing as a dude because you can make your dick like as long as your leg and you best dick believe that thing was dragging in the dirt when i was off questing dude you best believe yeah and uh <laughs> they took that shit off consoles man it did, Lame. Man, the, the, dick. Lame. the dick physics. Can we, can we talk about the dick physics in that game? The way I mean, like even if, like there was like floppy. a even if there was like a breeze, it would start to kind of like drift to one side. Like it was like it was made of like this helium. You know, it would just float and flap in the breeze. It was <laughs> the, yeah, it was more of like a cloth that was just <laughs> hanging. Like it had sometimes it have a mind of its own. Um, I got it to like rubber band like halfway across the map one time. And I don't the know best, how. <laughs> I was watching Mr. Moon Wilson. And this is one of the first time I tuned into Mr. Moon. And he's just running, right? And, like, no big deal. He's running. And I'm like, wait a minute. Is there a dick flapping between his legs? And then he stopped. And he crouched. And, yeah, it was a dick. Because he was like, he hit the, the dirt. Camera. <laughs> yeah, he put the camera up underneath. I remember the first time I tuned in to him playing the game. Uh, a bunch of people were just tuning in. And they're like, uh, what's your character? What's your character? And he's like, do you want to see my character? And he whipped the camera around to the front and whipped his loincloth off, loin off. And he goes, look at my character. And it was like down past his knees. And it's just it's just a funny ass game. But um, kind of brings me. I'm glad you brought him up. Um, he does a lot of things um, in those kind of games where it's role play. Yeah. Where you pick a character, you pick a personality and you stick with that personality while you're in game. You do not break character. So I could be a very timid person. Gary could be very dominant, very aggressive. You know what I mean? You don't break character. You don't refer, like, they even go as far as to, like, find ways, like, when they don't know what key to press, they'll find a way to work it into conversation casually in the game so they just don't, like, break the immersion. You know what I mean? Because these guys tell amazing unscripted stories like on the fly they're really good so to me that is extremely important to be able to pick your gender in a game um a perfect example of that is rust uh it was tied to your account when you purchased the game it was random whether you were a guy or a girl and people wanted to role play like how the hell are you supposed to role play this really intimidating dominant male <clears throat> when you're a chick you know what I mean? Like, it kind of breaks the immersion. Like, so they found ways to work it in. You know what I mean? But I think it's really important. Like, but um, for me, it's just whatever whatever I'm feeling. Um, sometimes, like, when I make a character on Destiny on PC, like, I'll try to, try to think of what my image of what, you know, my dream Titan would be, which she's a bad bitch, too, on PC. For me, it depends on what the game is. So if it's a competitive game... I'm just going to pick whatever the best possible variant is. So like World of Warcraft, most of my characters were female and they were the smallest race you could be. So it was like a, either a female dwarf or a female goblin or a female gnome, the smallest, because we worked out that females had smaller hitboxes um, and there were the smaller collision boxes, so they had to get nearer to melee them. So it was a tactical advantage. Like I didn't, I, I just play to win. You know, I don't really care about what they were like. But then if it's a story game, um, I think the character gender makes a, a big difference. So like The Witcher, for example, Witcher 3, let's go to. The times when you're playing as Geralt is so different to the times when you're playing as Ciri in the yeah. way the conversation is. The characters are very different, and I'm, in, I'm equally invested in both of them. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm, I'm on Ciri again. I'm, not, I'm, I'm just waiting to get back to Geralt. Like, 
I think that the way Siri approaches problems and the way Geralt sort of barrels headlong into them, it's very, very different things. And I think that gender can, I mean, it's a bit of gender stereotypes because not all women are, you know, smart and, and, you know, um, what's the word, like cognitive thinkers and not all men are just brutish, headstrong things. But I think if you've got a character that you can work on, it makes sense. Like Aloy um, in Horizon Zero Dawn, like I think she works well as a female and I think having a male character maybe would have impacted that in a certain way. I don't know. I think that the gender can definitely uh, make a character stand out. Story games, I think it, it makes more of a uh, an impact. In what, what do you guys think? I yeah, think you I make a good point about that, dude. Um, especially with uh, Ayla, um, I felt like it was, I don't know, it's more compelling when it's like, you know, this, I hate to say it, but, you know, she's very pretty. She's very soft. She's very delicate looking. You see out there just getting dirty, getting badass, just n like taking out big, beefy meathead of dudes with bows and arrows and stuff. <laughs> and there's something very attractive about that. I'm not, I'm not going to oh. lie. Like, it's really cool to see a woman succeed in, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn. It was very much um, <clears throat> brutal male society was, you know, calling a lot of the shots, you know, and yeah. she came in and did her thing and it was really cool. Um, but like uh, with a game, like what Gary was saying, where if it would give you a tactical advantage, I'd be all over that. Yeah, I'm all about the yeah. tactical advantage too. If I, if I know that there is a tactical advantage when I'm making that character, I'm all over it. If, if it's if it's a smaller hitbox, if it's like in PUBG, you're just a little bit thinner, so you hide behind a tree a little bit better, you know, like any tactical advantage. I don't give a shit. You know, I'm not sexualizing this character, basically. Like I I can't remember you last time I had like sexual with thoughts. Advantages. What's that? You basically you go at it as an androgynous character with advantages. Well it's a polygons. It's a it's a it's not an actual person. Um the person that it becomes is based on what I bring to the table most of the time because if it's already got personality, then it's already an assigned gender. So usually when I'm making a, when I'm assigning a gender to a new character, um, oftentimes like what I'm actually doing is I'm I'm basing it off of somebody I know or something I want it to become. Like in Destiny, I made a character off based off of you, Beastly, my titan in destiny one was it was beastly <laughs> that, that, that's beastly right i made it i made it as resemble you as best i could and then <laughs> i played it you were the beast it was the beast yeah. gamer um and, you know in i made a new hunter just recently and the character creator just kind of randomly started me off with an exo female hunter that had somewhat of a a pleasant look to her but also the hint of something devilish, right? Like, oh, like there's Kinky. something about her face that just kind mischief. of said, yeah, there's a little bit of mischief to it. And I just, mm -hmm. I just rolled with the the random the character random. creation for it because, wow, that's awesome. like, I don't know. She just, and now, like, when I play her, I, I always like looking to make a little trouble with my hunter here. <laughs> look at, <laughs> look at, I have a little fun. You know, we're mainly a good guy. Mostly. <laughs> yeah, every now and then that little trouble behind the eyes can come yeah, out. Huh, bro? Yeah, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, when it's my choice, I like to I like to build a personality up behind these characters. Got right? you. That's a very uh, unique way to, to approach it. That's And for, for me, like RPGs, I'll do that. RPGs. Uh, but it's really interesting that you, you use that with things like Destiny. You you already have kind of a preconceived notion of what you want these characters to kind of be like. And you build that from the beginning. Another game that really kind of pulled me in because of the, the female protagonist was Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, oh, that was fantastic. It, yeah. You guys know what it's like to, to, to be a male. And the way that they presented this character and built her up over the, the course of the game, she came across as a very real and believable character. And when you're out there in the world going through shit and she's screaming out in pain and all this stuff, it seems so real. Yeah. And, and it's part of the, the manly experience, experience, at least for me. I protect women. I have four. I'm glad you house. brought that up. Like, I'm the same way. I get protective over my female in-game so characters. protective over women. Yep. And so it's like when I'm playing that game and she's going through that shit, part of me is like, oh, I'm fucking failing. Yep. I got to protect this chick. I and that's another... Go ahead. About a callback as well to a recent game that I think we 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 all would have an opinion on um, if we brought it up that that would probably overlook now. It was a great title though, but Hellblade: Senua's yeah. Sacrifice. That works so well as a female character because she had motivation to be a female. I think that as well wouldn't have worked 
as well as a male character, which served the story well because she had her was it her boyfriend, you know, her husband? Boyfriend, you think that's some sexism she... coming into play though? You see a female as being more vulnerable so that you're you're more protective of it? I don't I see think a it grieving is, widow I'm... more vulnerable. Yeah, that's what I see it as true, I saw her true. as she was, you know, um she was given a role by her father and her father was, you know, abusive to, to her mother and all these sorts of things, not going into deep spoilers there, but you know, she's got roots in her psychological state. Um, and I think that were she a man, maybe her father would have just been happy with her being a hunter and going out and doing those things. You know, it's cause she had to fight oppression and other things there that she was a strong character. I don't care that she's vulnerable at all. I don't have what, what you guys have in terms of protecting a female. Like, you know, she can fight her own battles. I'm fighting no one, you know, I've, you know, I, I couldn't fight in anyone if I tried. Um, so for me, they're on their own. Uh, and you know, <laughs> genuinely, genuinely think I just I, I, I related to her as being you know like a, a vulnerable character you know I'm a vulnerable person myself and uh, you know I felt like we, we were both in that psychological state trying to get through it all um, I found Hellblade very scary actually I, I really was nervous in that game but I just get protective yeah. over their honor like yeah they can fight their own battles right, and stuff like right. that but like it's like their honor like if I'm playing like the Witcher when I'm Gerald you know I'm I'm a creepy old man. You know, I'm going around, I'm stealing Gerald's shit. I'm I'm looking through I'm looking through windows and stuff, seeing if I can go in there and take stuff. I'm doing <laughs> shit I'm not supposed to. But when it's the flip side and someone, you know, says something sexual to my character, you know what I mean? Like I I I, I get defensive over their honor. I don't know why, but like I'm just that creeper with Gerald, man. I'm always doing mischief. I'm talking shitty to people i'm a, I'm a hard ass and then i take like more of a respectful tone on the on the flip side but god witcher's so much fun man which is so good oh, i want to play Ste- the stealing now. stuff in witcher and oblivion is so much fun oblivion man. steal everything you can <clears throat> steal shit walk out and just like Fuck a thousand things fall out of your pocket like it just <laughs> explodes like when you're over encumbered and stuff. it's yeah it's, it's a lot of fun you guys let us know in the comments what do you choose when you play video games male or female protagonist and why we'd like to know here on twitch youtube and you can tell us in your review of our podcast on podbean itunes or wherever you do your podcasting we got one more topic would you guys like to get to it we got two actually Let's two one of them's down. yours yeah one of them the next one's yours all right cheating the system to game now uh everyone has been guilty of this at least i would expect but i would like to know have you ever called in sick to work or missed an important engagement to play a video game 100 percent. i have called in work i've called in school i think i've <clears throat> with um what is it uh dinners with you know significant others uh parents and stuff like that i've bailed on like they're i've done it all man when i'm into a game when i am into it when I get home from work, like, I cannot be fucked with. Like, that is what I'm into. That's what I'm coming home to experience. And um, I've done it all, man. I've called in work. I've called off just about everything to play games. Now, just to make sure your coworkers don't watch this podcast or listen, right? Okay. Uh, old old coworkers. I'm my own boss now, so <laughs> yeah, I got to go to myself man. and be like, do you really want to get paid today? <laughs> fuck it. I guess so. Live in the yeah, dream. Fuck it. Live in the dream. I do this now, man. I, I'm with Wilson. I pretty much work for myself, too. I, I mean, I have a bunch of jobs. Uh, you know, I do the photography thing, and that's definitely scheduled by a boss. Uh, and I don't miss that. Uh, but, man, like, there's there's times where I'm playing Destiny 2 right now, and I'm having such so much fun that I'm like, you know what? Mm, go to the post office, open that P.O. box, and wait. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I, I gotta play some video games right here. I'm having a ball. I've all been having a bag ton of, dicks of fun. That everyone, all the bag of dicks that everyone wants to send, you can wait. Yeah. Right, dude, dicks by mail. <laughs> dicks by mail. Call us. Call us. <laughs> dicks we by mail. I've the I've only game. Go ahead, Gary. I was gonna say the only game that's ever done it for me. Um, that wow. has genuinely had, yeah, that, that has wow. genuinely had an impact on my life has been World of Warcraft, like a, a, a lasting perceivable impact. Like I genuinely think that my grades and my job and my position in life is worse because I played World of Warcraft. <laughs> like I had wow. a friend who, who dropped out of school to play well. Like that's as bad as it got. Like he was midway through his like senior years and just was like, nah, like, I'm going to play well now. It just like stopped, just stopped going to school. And Has just he stayed talked at home. to him recently? Is he okay? 
He's he's self employed as well now. He's his own boss. He does fitness, but like, nice. um, yeah, he kind of just like just stopped going to school and spent a year yeah. just Bugging. mainlining. Wow, well. yeah, we just like, <laughs> yo, there was a I'm lot surprised of, like, that I didn't see in the topics this week. Classic wow coming. BlizzCon. I was going to put BlizzCon in, but I thought you guys wouldn't let me talk about it for ten minutes. So like, I mean, BlizzCon we made funny big. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't if we don't play well before sorry i was gonna say if we don't play well before then we all have to make a character on classic well and that's when we play as a we gotta do this i think we should do this can we do this i'm this down week? to do, do you it. think we can do uh wow this week i i think that's gonna be a fucking hilarious stream <clears throat> here's the down. deal i'll do wow but if i go too fucking deep you guys gotta pull me out you well, gotta get me out of there shit. well Is should like we have that? a conversation with sam first you need to tie a rope around my waist and <laughs> yoink that motherfucker. If I'm, I'm still in there after. Get me the fuck out, man. It's deep. I've actually called off work. I think back in the past, I was actually uh, self-employed in the early 2000s. And uh, I think I may have missed about five days in a row worth of work uh, playing uh, the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Mm. Now, back then I was very similar to the way I am now. I bought the game and I was I never played a Western RPG. I think I had Morrowind on the original Xbox, but I did not like the way it looked, so I just said, no, I'm not going to even fuck with that. But I started to see in all the game magazines online how amazing Oblivion looked. So I said, this looks like it looks like the real world. I gotta buy this. So I bought it, I brought it home, and I didn't really understand what I was supposed to do. It's just an open world for you to go and explore and do whatever you want. And so I went and bought the Oblivion, the Prima Guide. It was like a Bible, like that thick. And I spent a few days just reading through the book. And, and after about three or four days, I was like, this is the best game ever made. And so I started ju jumping into the game. And I, I missed about four to five days worth of work uh, because I just sat in my room. I didn't do anything. I don't even think I fed my kids. My boys were young. I think I was like, you know, go get some bread, you know, get some butter. Leave me the hell alone. And I fell in love with that game. Nowadays, I really don't have to do it. Uh, you guys know I work all the time. And usually I'll plan a vacation day around like the drop or the release of something amazing. Yeah. Uh, and so I really don't have to. I get four or five, five weeks uh, a year vacation. So like if there's something really big coming, I'll try to plan ahead and uh and and play it that way but yeah man oblivion was my shit that was my jam back in the day man came got me too man when it first came out i, I was doing uh construction i was doing concrete at the time i definitely called in a couple days of work uh, i lived like 30 40 minutes away from where our job sites normally were and i called and i was like oh man it's i didn't think we were working it's pouring down rain here and like it was but it's 40 minutes away from like where the job site was so <laughs> i was what's your excuse uh it's just raining and i figured we weren't working it's playing oblivion <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with that no doubt uh right, last we... topic this one's wilson's wilson <clears throat> all right boys let's get down to brass tacks here the world wants to know all right marry one Fuck one, kill one, revolver cast edition. So you you what you have to do is you have to pick someone from this cast who you'd marry, who you'd fuck, and who you'd kill. <laughs> this is getting real, boys. I've already given this a lot of thought. Um Daily. I, I would definitely I would I would definitely fuck Beastly, hundred percent. Oh. And I think we all know why. You know, once you, uh, what's the saying, Beastly? Once you once you go black, you never go back. <laughs> I think it's once you go black, you're gonna That's need it. a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> and then this was the hard one, man. Fucking like thirty inch like, python he was talking about earlier. <laughs> suddenly, <laughs> this was a tough one because a like, it was, like I kind of <laughs> I kind of wanted to to sleep with Gary, you know, but it'd be like a like a like a hate fuck, you know what I mean? like one of those. Um, <laughs> trying to put me in my place. <laughs> you know what I mean? It would definitely be one of those. So I went with Beasley, and I think I would uh, I would marry Briar because um, he's a good cuddler. He's very good at cuddling. He's nurturing. I do like yeah. cuddling. And I just have to kill Gary, man, because there's no way that we could exist with me playing with controller on PC, man. There's no way that relationship would ever work. Months of repressed hate just being let out when you batter me to death with a DualShock 4, isn't it? I've got the Last of Us trailer with a DualShock 4. <laughs> Gary's dead. Gary's dead. Yeah. Uh, Gary would have to die. And it's not because I want Gary to die. It's just that <laughs> I think we'd, we'd argue constantly. I'd say, you know, Gary, 
Let's watch a horror movie. No, I can't. I can't. Gary, come play PS4 with me. And that fucking peasant. So Gary's fucking dead. Okay? That's an easy one. Uh, I, I'd have to... Three for three. Jesus. I, I'd have to fuck Wilson because he, he seems so... He seems so mysterious oh. and full of life. And he's young, too. You just want to stick your dick in that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I would have to marry Briar uh, because Briar, like Wilson said, you know, he pegged him. I've known Briar for years. He's he's a great listener and he's very informed and informative. He can, you know, give you some great advice if you need it. And if, if things are going wrong in your life, Briar will come and pat you on your shoulder and say, hey, it's going to be all right. I love you. And, and and I can live with that. So, you know, in the alternate reality, Gary would be fucked. Wilson would get fucked. And me and Briar would get hitched. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. I mean, I, I thank you. Uh, but I'm not going to lie. <laughs> two for two, Briar. There's no possibility I'm having sex with that 30-inch python. <laughs> I have to kill you, Beastly. I have it's to kill all you. Good, <laughs> it's I'm like old yeller. <laughs> I don't want that thing anywhere fucking near me. You know, you got to cut the head off because snakes. You know. <laughs> got to put it down before it bites someone. <laughs> I would marry you, but you might just get a little frisky one night, and all of a sudden, <laughs> so I'm fun. getting a Mr. Hands. <laughs> oh, God. So, I'm going to marry Wilson. Uh, Wilson brings out the best in me. He really does. When I'm yeah, getting he can pissed off, too. Wilson is a calming force. When I'm doing stupid shit, Wilson brings me back, right? Like when I'm, when we're playing trials and I'm off doing my lone wolf thing, he's like, you're all alone out there. Come back. Come back. Hold dicks. And yeah, I do. <laughs> I come back to Wilson. You hold that dick. But I think Gary is definitely my fucking girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, we are, you are going the man. to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I mean, I kind of expected it eventually. It was, it was a matter of time. It's kind of like gravity. Uh, that's that's it, though. I I just I'm too intimidated by the by the by the penis. I'm glad <laughs> so I, I didn't have to go kill three for, I think if I went three for three, murdered by the crew, I'd have had to have just done it myself. That was terrible. I was kind of hoping you were. I'm not going to lie. I was kind of hoping we'd all secretively go in on that and be like three out of four members murder. would kill Gary. Damn. Well, I, I'm at a predicament here myself, you know. You have to kill me, Gary. No, you usually know, I don't call out chat. I'm so listen, sorry. Gary, Gary, look. I don't call kill, out chat too often, but Hugo just said, if Beastly dies, the world average dick length incre- decreases by three inches. <laughs> <laughs> I said true. The whole world. <laughs> Gary, you have to kill me, and it's oh, okay. Why? Um, why? Well, if you kill me, then you and I are equal. So no love lost. We both no, died no, no. You see, the, the the nervousness I have is taming the python. You know, the the, the anaconda. <laughs> you gotta uh, go it's slow, Gary. Beastly. Like everybody wants to marry you because you're a provider. You're there for people. You're strong. You're handsome. And I know that you're gonna be fun to marry because we're always gonna be sitting on the couch gaming. But you get anywhere near me with that thirty inch python. Fuck off, man. Killing you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a a, a get out of jail free card here. Right, I'm gonna fuck Beastly. He's gonna be my girl, right? And the yeah. reason I'm gonna Somebody's fuck him, adventurous. the reason I'm gonna fuck him, <laughs> no one, no one said how we fuck him. He's my power bottom right now. I'm avoiding <laughs> the python altogether. I might get a sore arm during the reach around. I might be overextending a little bit. Throw it's your not shoulder a, out. It's not playing a fucking trombone, just like you know, full full length of it. Um, but that's my get out of jail free card. And, and to be fair, BC, you, you wouldn't feel a thing. My wife never does. So you'd be fine. Don't worry. It's painless. Oh, God. Painless. So that's that there. I've now got a predicament here. I've got to kill one of the two of you. Yeah. So looking at uh, my options here, I think I'm going to have to kill Wilson. Oh. And the reason that I'm going to have to kill Wilson. How can you because kill Willie? Because I'm not a violent man. And I think of the two of you here, the one that's going to put up less of a fight, <laughs> I, feel is, I feel like Wilson's such a nice guy. He's going to just slit his own throat, you know? He's going to just take that trouble away for me. You know Look, man, Brother, I know this I, is really I, hard for you. Um, <laughs> so, like, I'm just 
gonna go ahead and step out into traffic. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> done. She's done it for me. You know, it's like that. That um, you know, he's gonna he's gonna take the blade for me, like Han Solo style. Spoilers, and just plunge it into himself. You know, so I've, I'm just guilt free. Um, so that's there. So I'm left with me and Briar, married for life. You know, going there. I feel like. You know, I feel like this is going to be a very expensive marriage for me. Yeah, bro, you have no money left because now you're married to this ass and every day he's going to tell you to buy something else awesome. Yeah. I feel like, you know, just a, a part of me just is attracted to bears, you know, and I feel like you would be, you would be my bear. And like, I feel like, you know, you're a bear. I feel Briar like, bear. Well, like, you know, you're... I feel I I would feel the wife role like your clothes would be big on me so when I'm cold you could put your big sweatshirt around me and it would just like keep me warm and happy. That is love. Bro, it is. I mean, you really love. thought this through, bro. You it's can wear compassion. your significant other one's clothing. That is love. And I also don't call out chat too often, but Gray Fox said Gary would kill me because it's the vape. <laughs> it is. I mean, I'm not. Vape. I'm not a violent person. Like I said, I need someone who's going to help me along on that way. And in marriage, I need someone who's going to be strong and supportive. Do you know what it'd be? It'd be nice to just be able to to be like, this is my husband and look up and see up there. You know, it's just like, have that there. You know, it's just like that kind of feeling of, of comfort and warmth. I think you could provide that. I still and, feel like Briar would say, lay my clothing out for me too. I feel like he would. You know, yeah, I think exactly. I, Yesterday you looked like a fucking mess. Put these on. <laughs> I feel like he'd be the, the lovable scamp that I need, you know, someone that I can I can cook for and clean for and just generally make feel like the the king they are, you know. I can I can feel that that role as a housewife. And, and you I, I got it that made, Briar. You have it made. Well, basically, in short, in this uh, little amazing topic that Wilson came up with, Briar got married three times. He is I would marry material. each and every one of you. I would be totally polygamous with all of you, but be some, we ain't fucking. Right now, <laughs> it's off the table. Gary's down. It's off the table. Shit. So what, from what we figured out from this, Briar's the marriage material. <clears throat> Apparently a couple of us want to kill Gary. Um, <laughs> everyone's scared of Beastly's anaconda. No one's really quite sure what to think about me. <laughs> kind of a mix. I would have married no, you. No, no, I, 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 I fucked you, Wilson. Yeah, you fucked me. Briar married me. Gary killed me. <laughs> so just... It was a coward's way out for me. Yourself. I'm sorry. <laughs> coward's way out. Expect Very the informative. For the best, Wilson. I feel closer. This is good. <laughs> I feel like that was, was a good way to end the show. That was a I good think topic. Chat, <laughs> chat <laughs> need to decide it for us as well. If chat in the comments section, either on Podbean, iTunes, or YouTube, if you could put in your own theories for I mean, what we should, we should put do with in each iTunes, other and why. Right? Like, Let's get some let's get some uh, reviews on iTunes on who you yeah let's get some iTunes reviews Mary fucker kill <laughs> Mary fucker kill now now Brian make sure I feel you like say that's Mr. exactly what Apple wants to see on their platform <laughs> I'd listen to that podcast that's why that they let us on you know, Brian exactly you have to tell Miss Rabbit today that you are marriage material and that she should consider herself lucky mm, I'll tell her but. <laughs> right. I also need. I don't know need, what the fuck she's going to say. I need chat to do me a massive favor. And if you've reached this far, then, you know, you're a glutton for punishment and you like to do stupid shit with your lives because um, you've just listened to us for two hours. We're trying to get in touch with a company, Dicks by Mail. Um, this company <laughs> allow you to anonymously send penises to anyone else in the world. <laughs> they look like a fantastic business and someone that we really want to get in touch with. So if you could tweet. At Dicks by Mail. We're going to put a link in the uh, comment section. They do have a Twitter <laughs> account. And if you could tell them that the guys from Revolver tag any one of us in there and the guys from Revolver need to talk to them, we'd be eternally grateful. Can we get, get at Dicks by Mail um, some love, get them some shout outs, uh, and get them in touch with the Revolver guys? Because this needs to happen. This is a partnership that, that's made in heaven. Yeah. At We're talking Dicks serious deals mail. here, people. We're right? not kidding, like, guys. <laughs> we want to get a hold of some of that dicks by mail money. <laughs> Actually, we just want to get free samples. <laughs> we want to send you guys bags of dicks. Yes, At dicks do. by mail, go over to Twitter, <laughs> let them know, sound off, just blow them up and tell them to get in contact with the Revolver guys. It'll be a match made in heaven and dicks on earth. We got to make this happen. I mean, I'm serious. It, we'd be, we're trying to get an official sponsorship with them, even if it's something really silly, something that maybe we could give away once in a blue moon or something. 
<laughs> Maybe you could get some anonymous dicks. I don't know. <laughs> I Tune want in. Anonymous dick. I've yeah. wanted anonymous dicks every day since I heard about it. <laughs> I oh, love yes. the fucking logo. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing. But yeah, I mean, you know, if you're finding us on iTunes, Podbean, please leave reviews, please leave comments, leave likes, share it. But most importantly, get in touch with Dicks by Mail. Let, make this happen. I think if we can make this happen as a community, uh, if we can fuck them like Big Bird, it would be amazing. <laughs> Birds. Cause Let's a lot make of that dicks. dream. Let's make I, that dream happen. I've got to start ordering spring loaded dick bombs more often. I don't know. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> spring loaded dick bombs. And Hermitage is now that the shipping on the BC replica is horrendous. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be delivered in a semi truck, you know, just Sorry. pulled up. Like a forklift. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect way to end the show. I don't think we can go any higher than that. That was it's we good. peaked. We've got to get chat on screen. We need to be able to. Yeah, yeah on, man. So. You guys are too funny, man. You are absolutely hilarious. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this show. Where can people find you? Find Beasley? me on Twitter, at Ryu Wilson. Tweet us out. Dicks by mail. All that stuff. Tag us. Let us know. Beastly. Tweet me. Tweet me. Beastly underscore underscore gamer on Twitter. Gary? And, of course, my YouTube channel. You can find me on um, Twitter, Gary Diaz 86 underscore BT for some reason. Um, I don't know. It's Big thugging. There. Big thugging. Big. I went with Big Thugging, but I'm thinking that kind of doesn't suit my image anymore. So I've got to think, well, if, if Chat can come up with something that the BT stands for, I'd really appreciate that. It could be Beastly Twink now. You did choose me to fuck. <laughs> Beastly <laughs> Twink. It could be Beastly Tugging. <laughs> After that Reacher Hound joke, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Beastly Tugging. Or broken, <laughs> just broken and torn, which is what I'll most likely be after my moment with him. Um <laughs> But yeah, you could uh, find me on Twitter, or alternatively, you can just hit up the podcast Revolver Live on iTunes or Podbean, um, which would be far more useful and influential than following any sort of strange, toxic shit that I post on Twitter. <laughs> Yo, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Beastly Twink. <laughs> Beastly Twink.